Hey everyone, and welcome to Rezocast episode 113. This is Lego, and I've got with me Hove, Triton, and Wilson today to talk about the Black Armory that was just released. Whether uh, you like it or not, there's a lot of controversy over this one. Uh, but I, I'm not, for one, going to call it a DLC. It's our uh, season pass that we got here. Um, guys, how's your week been? How are you enjoying the Black Armory Hove? Can I tell you about a controversy? <clears throat> uh i mean is it the one we're talking about or is this is a the, different is it controversy? The strip club controversy there downtown? is yeah there is a strip club in the area <laughs> called controversy. that's not um what a way to start a podcast no that's not what I, I this is where we talk about our week right okay yeah yeah and i just want to tell you that apparently triton just gave me terrible news that eaton park is changing oh, their my. french fries no change, not is. Well, but like they, they but that's a survey. They're like testing them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's... this is something you learned five minutes ago. This has no, this isn't your week. <laughs> oh, how is it not no. my week? Okay, yeah. let me rephrase. Hove, how is your week in Destiny? Well, I I would have been playing Destiny up until the podcast, but when I learned about these French fries, I was <laughs> devastated. <laughs> I was so distraught that um, it became the top agenda. Yeah. Uh. It, it's been good. Um, I'm not as upset about things as some people. I've gotten some more exotics. Uh, I got chromatic fire. Mm-hmm. Also, Ooh. since when were we only allowed to talk about destiny in our how was your week thing? That's new. Yeah, no, we, we can talk about whatever. I just like pushing you around sometimes. You don't get to do that. Um, <laughs> I just did. <laughs> so I got the Cerebrus plus one. I got chromatic fire. Uh... Hey, what do you think about Cerebrus plus one? Uh, I only used it, like, very, very briefly, and uh, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, but that's still two more new ones. So that was good. Um, I just did uh, the, the, the Forge with Dewey and some other guy that we found. He just joined our fire team in the middle of a mission. <laughs> I did just join. <laughs> I saw them and I was like, I could ask for a party invite. You know that you go through that routine where like you send a party invite and then they send a party invite to you because they don't actually want to join your party. You want they want you to join their party. And so instead of doing any of that, I was like, their fire team's open. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna join them. No, I mean I get it, but like you also have my phone number. We're friends in Discord, Twitter any mode of communication or i could just join you it was you have to admit that was easier I like th- given that we're friends i thought about kicking you and that would have been funny i i would have expected it like if you would have i'd been like yeah no that actually <laughs> happened lego came in and was like oh i'm surprised you didn't kick me and i was like why would i do that um <laughs> why would i do that does. secretly thinking <laughs> about kicking him <laughs> I, I, maybe i would but i probably wouldn't uh but no i mean it's it's been good i mean we'll you know we'll dive into some thoughts but i I think there could have been some things different, but I'm not too upset about Black Armory. I like where it's headed. I like, you know, the, the possible future that's going on. And to be completely honest, honest, all of that has been completely overshadowed by Frygate. <laughs> because Frygate I'm... 2018. It, seriously, how much do we talk... Me and Triton go to Eaton Park after the podcast. If their fries suck, like Triton said they do, I won't... I Fuck that place. <laughs> would you call it, you call it Frygate? Like Frygate. it's a Watergate scandal? Like Spygate. Like, oh, I thought it was, you're like comparing it to like Watergate, like a scandal. Well, yeah. like, That's what they okay. do. Any kind of like controversy now is something gate. Deflate gate, gotcha, gotcha, Spygate. Gotcha. Okay. Frygate. Frygate. <laughs> Frygate. Thong gate. Nope. Nope. That's not an issue. Skidmark <laughs> gate. Uh, well, I also got a new exotic uh i got antius wards for the titan the legs that let you reflect stuff back i haven't really got to try it out yet other than i just put it on because it's my highest light level thing me and hove were doing the forge with dewey just a second ago and i was like sliding around but wasn't really reflecting anything i ended up switching it off because i didn't really need it back to my uh insurmountable skull fort so i could keep titan slamming things continually over and over again and getting my super back but i thought the forge was pretty fun i think that the basics of it for me is nothing has really changed that much because i don't do a lot of pve stuff anyway i just have been doing crucible and i just have been um 
going after the grenade launcher you know the new pinnacle weapon for the crucible and so basically nothing's changed i'm just still going into quick play when i'm not playing comp and just getting my grenade launcher kills which i'm at 91 percent on my doubles right now so i'm like oh, right right there on the on the edge um so i'm really excited that. That quad yeah. kill yeah, Dude, the quad that kill. quad kill that whole game i was just going off and i went from like i think 80 six percent to no 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 it was 76 percent to 91 percent like from almost one game it might have been a few but the Is last the time game i when checked you were playing was with us because i remember you got another quad when you were playing with us too that was it i got like remember, a triple i got i got a few triples i never got a quad though well, I you, don't you, you said something about a quad and i go or two doubles no he and missed then, <laughs> he missed the he said he missed, I the, missed quad. the quad yeah okay, that's yeah i remember that I because like, oh. i was like oh my god i'm gonna blade barrage all these guys and i threw it <laughs> and then i didn't get any credit for kills and i was really confused until lego started screaming and then I realized what happened. It does yeah. surprise me how many more kills I get with grenade launchers when I'm not playing with my teammates, like with my friends, like, and I'm just playing with blueberries. Even if Wilson is like, hey, I got the power over here, come get it. You know, like he's such a good friend, like over there letting me have it so I can get the grenade launcher kills. Is he? But even, Remember even Hope was going to steal it? Remember that? Yeah. saw in his yeah. eyes. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> he decided not to though i appreciate he it. he was a good friend too yeah. he decided not to um but it's just because my friends i feel like are good like and we're communicating and stuff so we're like doing well versus if you're playing with blueberries everybody's just doing their own thing and yeah. no one's really paying attention it's just easier to get double grenade launcher kills for some reason that way but uh back to the black armory um I, before I got online, I just played by myself, and I had a really cool experience just um, wandering around the tower um, trying to find Ada and, and her new place. Like, we, me and Mark Square, um, and I think it was Jelly Belly, were walking down um, to where Ada was, the new area of the tower, and I heard so many people complain about it being in the tower and um just the way the quest starts off and no nothing new interesting and i had a lot of fun just like wandering around we found like a secret vent like in there you know how there's secret tower spaces in the part of the tower we have now there's like more stuff like that and i was like oh wow look at this place and it took us like an hour to even get to ada because we were just wandering around looking at stuff um but yeah it's not like a typical dlc or expansion you don't get story or any of that right away it's just in-game stuff so if you're not focused on those things are not there yet it's going to be hard to do those activities and that's kind of where i'm at and i see it i i went into the forge once at exactly 600 as soon as i got there and it was fun even though i couldn't complete it i had fun for the little amount of time i'm not sure how i'll feel about it in a week but as far as for the past two days but in a week fun you'll have right now. two more it's new done. forges yeah yeah, I know, which is crazy. And, and the dawning so. is yeah, next yeah. week, too. So there's going to be a lot, which is, you know, I think about the speed that I play the game, but I do a lot of Crucible, too. Um, so I'm not saying for or against, you know, the way it's going. I just know for me, like, I'm having a good time still. And I, you know, it's just updated stuff. Uh, what about I do, Triton I Wilson? do just want to clarify one thing real quick. Um, mm -hmm. a, a little bit ago when I said Skidmark Gate, I just want to clarify that I'm 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 not talking about like tire skid marks. I'm talking about like <laughs> skid marks in your pants. Yeah, I know. Um, like the kind you get like when you're really excited watching Gilmore Girls. <laughs> How does? I don't know where that excitement comes from for you. I know for Wilson that excitement comes from like when he gets a bow Smoking shot weed. off and he like claps someone. I'm not sure why he calls it a clap, but he. He says, oh, they're clap. Like, I don't know. Are you talking about booty clap or it's like, less, what? what is happening? I got Lego to say booty clap. It's less syllables than absolute. I feel like in it's a, actually in a well, highly easy there, Tiger. I've already mapped this one out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's still, it, but like, it's easier to say. I feel like things with less syllables easier to say are make better call outs. The quicker you can get it out, the quicker that person can hear it and respond to it. So, oh, okay, so it's like the minimal amount you can say, just minimal effort, maximum reward, basically. So what? Like, it, what <laughs> is it short for then? <laughs> no, I mean, it's not like really short for anything. It's just that like if you hit, he's clapped. If you shoot that guy, he's gonna he's gonna die. Like he's he's absolute. He's clapped. He took an arrow to the face. This is dumb. He's clapped. He's out of there. Get him out. 
I, I don't I but don't understand what's it's happening. It's a team shot. It, it it's great because bow having a guy with a bow on your team is great because if he claps a guy, he has to take time to reload, uh, re knock that arrow, not reload, re knock the arrow, mm. and uh, if you roll as a team, like your buddies are gonna get that kill. So if you're trying to get grenade launcher kills, hang out with the guy that's a good shot with a bow. Like it's just gonna be easy cleanups all day. Like yeah, me and Dewey. Like... You can hit him in the face like from Narnia. <laughs> and like it me and Dewey do it all the time. We'll both be running a bow and usually people will stick around with us and just clean him up and we get credit for the kill too, so everyone wins. I tell you what, it helped me a lot on the double grenade launcher kills whenever you were clapping people. Yeah, yeah it's, nice. it's fun. Booty yeah. clapping. I have kind of the flip flop of that with a guy that I play with because he doesn't do the initial clap. He likes to do the cleanup clap. So he got gotcha. <laughs> He's like the sloppy seconds clap. <laughs> so you're in there and you're doing like, you know, 50% of the work and then all of a sudden he's dead and it's because he just kind of was right over your shoulder waiting for you to get him right in that range where the one shot anything bow is going to kill him. And right. I had a game with him the other day and I, I think I ended up having like a five or six efficiency. And I'm like, I don't think I killed that many people. Look back later, 20 assists. And oh my God. It have been a career high across all destinies. It's like, and I told him, I said, dude, we got to just go on the other side of the map. We gotta I just want to know who this is. Together. Oh, it's my buddy, Bloody Prophet, actually. Oh, oh okay. See, the cleanup yeah. clap, I enjoy because if I shoot a guy in the face, he goes back into cover, his buddy comes out, I clap him up, and then I kind of peek around the corner a little more as he starts to go in. I have uh, Dragonfly on my bow. So if I get if I get two guys clapped up and they're hiding in the same area and then I get a headshot on one, he explodes and kills the other. And mm. boy, does that hit every pleasure zone, let me tell you. Mm. You know what we need to do, Wilson? I thought about this the other day because you, uh, in uh, the old D1 montage, um we were playing trials on twilight gap and we were using bangers the lightning nades oh my God. at the same time and it was yeah, like bangers? it would do the same amount as like a clap from a bow you know but we were like oh they're running to the same spot let's let's do bangers off the that. wall right there and we threw nades at the exact same time at the exact same wall I was it was there. like in in Cole unison just and just and one hit kill at least two people was, no time to react was that all. the yeah. same like, game where you made that crazy ridiculous ending and where you beat that punched team? everyone i think i it think it was been. the same game yeah we got hyped we were hyped that Bangers entire game. Like, a, like, a, like a 150 point okd that's an exaggeration <laughs> but like you got knocked down a peg or two yeah <laughs> yeah um we lowered it a little bit oh weird thing yeah, real we, quick we gloated I said, remember I told you I got chromatic fire? Yeah. So you know yeah. how it's supposed to cause an elemental explosion with kinetic kills, kinetic precision mm -hmm. kills? It doesn't work on harpies. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Weird. You should make a tweet so about you, that. Like, that you have so a harpy problem. Ooh, I for life, have. Dog. Why? It's Listen. For life. Triton's yeah, in chat saying it. over under on the amount of times Hove has had the clap. You're saying That's I have me. harpies. <laughs> What? Why? You why? Those cold sores a while ago. I mean, ask Asher Mir, man. Nobody wants the harpies. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I still think every time Sorry, someone Asher. says Asher, I think of that. That uh, what's his name? Asher Roth. Oh, oh man, I love college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, Triton or Wilson? How about your weeks? Only Destiny though, or you're I've kicked off the podcast apparently. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my week's been great uh, in Destiny, so I got to six sixteen on my hunter light Damn. level. Wow! And didn't even play today, and I've also gotten to six eleven on the Titan. Now they have shared a little bit weapons, of course, so um, it That's has still... helped. But he's a god. Um, didn't <laughs> every powerful engram activity possible, and uh, so I, I am pretty much done with every part of the quest for breakneck and loaded question except for the actual games i think i'm within like 20 games still strikes but i need only 12 more did you quit matches. your job and give your kids up so, for adoption no so the kids grind so many things for me so all <laughs> i was just gonna say dude <laughs> so <laughs> you're not at stories. 612 or whatever it's slave labor your family like your family labor. has nah man amazing. if you call it chores it's not <laughs> child labor it is amazing <laughs> it is amazing so kids are like you know 
they're in indoors more because it's winter obviously it's cold out so they can't go outside and play so they're like get on each other's nerves and i'm like well one of you guys can go in and grind some vanguard story missions you want like yeah i'll definitely do that come back all three of those done if it's the older one he'll do the strikes and i might trust him to do gambit he'll do like the flashpoint he'll do the sort of punishment a yeah. really mundane activity. <laughs> there's a good chance i'm not ignoring your invite there's a good chance it's just probably one of my kids yeah, and so mm. the, the whole gambit thing, you ought to like leverage that as a punishment. Like, you didn't clean your room, do my gambit. three matches of gambit. Oh, gambit. I had mouse pieces with two <laughs> of the three characters that are at the point where like moats lost are bad. So I went in, oh, yeah. my youngest, yeah. and I let play gambit. He got in there, he had not killed one thing, he had not collected one moat, and he's like, What's this thing that keeps spitting out enemies? I'm like, Bro. This is how I'm gonna get hate mail. So he doesn't do Gambit, but the older two do do but Gambit. Mm. But I don't know if I trust them to lose. They always want to hold 15, and I'm like, no, you got to do like five. Mm. So, uh, so I saw the good. meatball again. Uh, did not kill it again with blueberry. Ooh. I need to go in with a team. I keep going in solo, just mm -hmm. screwing around. And then the the we do great. We're like slain, and then the meatball comes out, and they just fall apart every time. It's like pressure or something. Yeah, everyone like, freaks the fuck out, and they're yeah. like, Ooh, I'm just gonna pop my super on well, it right listen, now." Listen, listen. <laughs> one one of the guys, literally, I saw him jump up and punch one of the thing that tethers the boss that like shields it instead of shooting it. He jumped up and punched it, and I was like, "What?" He was mm. like, "Bruh, what? Hold my you, beer." Yeah, <laughs> to punch this thing. So, <laughs> and then we with, lost. <laughs> with Gambit. I'm trying to go for the second. I'm trying to get Dredge and Seal done, but I need those hundred modes. So yesterday mm -hmm. we got the bluebies that you dream of to get that done. Hundred modes deposited. You got to win the match, and no one dies. So oh. these bluebies, I don't think they knew how to play Gambit because they had like three when we were about to summon the Prime Evil, and I was like, <laughs> guys, this is the run. Let's do it. And I got to 90, and it was the Vex that spawned both Cyclopses and Hydras in the second game. Like this is the worst, and got killed by like some kind of like Vex uh, Cyclops, like yeah, damage. Lost it. Was so disappointed because like I've that's probably the last thing I need. I mean, I need one more person to invade with a super and kill them. But other than that, I need that 100 moats. So maybe we can get a team together. We can do yeah, that. Yeah, I need to. That. That'd be cool. I um, won't be there. Find somebody else. I've got some. I've got some decent gambit <laughs> strategy. Like you know, you just gotta pay attention to things. Like when your yeah. portals up. Like when, when mm. our portals up to invade, you don't need to go right away. Yeah. And it doesn't show that they're holding moats. Little things like that. Like you don't mm. want to invade right away when they summon their prime evil. You want to wait till it does like at least two to three guardians worth of damage, so that when you kill two to three guardians, he's back at full health. You want to avoid using your super when invading, you know, like little things like that. You really want unless to... you're invading us, please. Two use warlocks, <laughs> two warlocks with the the beam of death super, dude. Just oh yeah, and yeah. a titan with melting point. Like rest, mm. the boss is done. Like yeah, dude. Did y'all see the one of the runner ups movie of the weeks? First, uh, big congrats to um, Anubis Gaming, Yam um and uh, jojo there were some other people too uh gosh i'm blinking on names right now um she's gonna kill me um catch i assume catch yeah yes, uh, just call uh, emma catch. yeah i could i keep thinking uh, i was trying to think of her actual emma and joe i love those two yeah That's and so people. congrats to them for their runner-up movie of the week and also the other runner-up movie of the week was <laughs> someone superman tightening the vault like where you deposit the moats the bank and each person had 15 moats going to it mm. and he killed all four of them on the other team God. and the bar went completely to zero it that was guardian is love and life beautiful he freaked <laughs> out and he was like what and the other he was like trying to explain what gambit was to the people he was playing with and they were like God. what did you do and he's like i just killed everyone it was, it was that's kind of the awesome. feeling I had this week. I had a uh, a five guardian blade barrage kill in the Whoa. in the crucible. Ooh, nice, oh, man. It was on the Pantheon map. Yeah, um, we were kind of bullying them, spawn bullying them a bit, and they were flopping spawns were flopping back and forth, and you know <laughs> we were racing around, and, and I looked back and I said, okay, they're mopping shit up back there, so these guys are all gonna spawn on this opposite side. So I was the only one there, and you know there's that that narrow choke going right into the middle and all five of them went there, man. And oh. it was pretty epic. Like just so many bl blade barrages. I could, there's so many, I couldn't even count, but Hove instantly goes, did you get five of them right there? And I'm like, hold on, wait for it. 
like the medals are rolling through and like the Slayer one pops up and like nice. triumphs are going yeah. off. And I was like, oh, if I would have just got one more, I would have had like that whole page of triumphs complete. Like, yeah, that Reaper medal. Yeah, it was super Dang. nice. But like, um, I also got some exotics this week. Um, I got the Cerberus auto rifle as well. It got me that wave splitter. That shit oh, is man. nasty, dude. I'm jealous of that. Um, the ammo economy sucks for it in PvP, but it's okay because that gun is fucking ridiculous. Like, it is dumb. It is dumb. And like, it can become kind of unfun at times. Like, mm -hmm. it's boring, I believe, were the words that Hove used at one time. And, like, wow, I get it now. multiple it people saying the same thing. It just gets boring, like, because, like, it's fun. You're like, holy shit, I just melted this guy. And then, like, you're out of ammo and you're screwed and mm -hmm. you've just got your primary. And it's kind of like a like a Telesto problem. You're like, oh, I killed the guy with Wave Splitter or Telesto. And I'm like, great, now the problem's back. <laughs> like mm. if that guy's out of Telesto, let him live. Like kill <laughs> <laughs> that guy last. Like don't you know worry I mean? about him. Yeah, <laughs> let him go. Um but uh yeah, and then I got a uh I got a mind bender uh shotgun mm. on like a casual nightfall run that I put the wrong modifiers on and it was just me and Sam <laughs> doing it and <laughs> I put void burn on on that strike. Oh gosh. Yeah. I used wave splitter though, and that shit was nasty. Like I'm not I'm not even kidding. Good in PvE, good, lots of ammo. Wow. With, uh, nice. Void burn. But um it's been kind of a roller coaster for me as far as like black armory uh is concerned. At first, like the first day, I was really taken aback and um definitely have some concerns that aren't as big of a concern like going into even just day two and like mm -hmm. kind of relooking at like the roadmap like this is <laughs> like what i'll say this podcast like i am going to kind of play the somewhat negative side of it but with all this being said it is week one of 12 yeah. for this you know what i mean like there mm -hmm. is a lot mm -hmm. this we need to like let this play out because passing early judgment this who knows three weeks from now this could be fucking awesome like yeah. we don't you know what i mean like we could be looking back three weeks from now going holy shit there's actually a lot to do and a lot to keep us engaged we need to give it some time but i will i do have some like initial concerns and things that like came up which like i'm sure we'll get into like but... yeah i think we should get in those now uh there because there's a lot of other stuff to talk about but i know i don't have that much time as i'll be taking off a little early from the podcast this i also week, got but... those keeper i forgot uh, Ooh. Uh, what does that do again? i don't know that's is that the, the bow uh, one? That's yeah. The, the gloves that, uh, so the whole thing that like people don't know with bows, there's a thing called a perfect draw. Right. Yeah. So when you pull your bow back and then it fully charges. So from the point of it fully charging to when your arm starts shaking, that's when you can inflict the most damage with the bow. If you release mm. it before the fully charge or after you start shaking, you actually do less damage. The oath keeper, right. basically it'll, it has a. Um, forever. It doesn't have a quicker charge time or a uh, quicker draw time. It actually has a quicker charge time from when you fully draw your bow, and mm -hmm. then you can hold it. Like Hope said, you could you can hold it in forever. Mm -hmm. uh, very last thing, <laughs> I also made sure to call Lego earlier this week because I got an Arantel that has better range, stability, oh and handling gosh. than his, and the under pressure. He literally part. calls me. I did. I called him. Like, hey. Wow, and I, and I was like, chat. oh, oh, Hove calling me. Hey, what's going on? He's like, I got an air until bye. <laughs> That's not <laughs> no, true. We talked about it for a while. Yeah, no, I just kidding. He didn't just because I put up, you but... on speakerphone and you lied to Triton. But anyway, let's proceed. I did not armor. lie. He thinks his uh, air until is better than mine, but it, it doesn't have max impact. So, uh, but it has better range, stability. It is better in handling. a lot of other ways. <laughs> I've we'll got see. so many Forsaken exotics, I'm not getting duplicates. That'll be my end of week. <laughs> well, let's talk about the Black Armory stuff. Wow. There's, um, you know, I think everyone's big criticism going into it was we couldn't do new things right away. The bounty that you had to do to get, or the quest, I guess, that you had to do to get to the forge initially is kind of like the same kind of stuff we'd been doing. And even then to be able to complete the forge, I, I guess um easily I, I saw some people completing it lower 600s but still some people on their team were higher than them like 610 and stuff like that so maybe it is i didn't see anybody who was all 600 able to complete it um but 
basically it you have to level up a bit before you can complete it or the average person can at least and so um it's almost like it's an is, end game thing I don't know. yeah exactly and so that that has been an ongoing thing and for me the the way that i see it is i feel like this whole thing has been branded wrong because we've this is just my personal opinion it, it feels like everybody had the opinion that it was going to be like all the other dlcs and it's a common thing online for to see people commenting like this is the worst dlc like it's not a dlc in my opinion it's more like the way that we used to have um just quality of life like i forgot what they called it it, w it was like the team that was just for improving destiny kind of after um they stopped doing dlcs for destiny one and it's that's kind of what the season pass is, is it's more like an update to the season and so um to me it's almost like we shouldn't have named them like black armory and the next two like they shouldn't have names like dlcs do because that's not what it is they should have just left it at season of the forge and that th i guess the problem with that is they have to call it something or otherwise there would be it would be like a subscription-based game because basically they're trying to make it a subscription-based game without having everyone pay for it that's what they're doing there so was they a had to really it. interesting that's, article did you see that article like problem no i didn't that's just i, I want to say the it way was i was thinking about polygon it. i could be wrong mm -hmm. um, i didn't read the whole thing but i read the headline and kind of skimmed over it and that was their point yeah. like it probably i totally see that it probably would have been received the update itself would have been received better if it was marketed as a subscription thing Granted, yeah. I also think if they came out and said we're going to move to a subscription model, you'd have a lot of people freak out too. Yeah, at least, yeah especially absolutely. at least initially. Zone ramifications, mm -hmm. right? But as far as the acceptance of what we were given, it's working more like a subscription type of thing. Read the article. Check it out. It's an interesting article. I think it's Polygon, but if you just Google and like you... Destiny Two subscription or something, it'll come up. We might tweet I'm that out on as a cast. Definitely going to look. Yeah, I'm definitely going to look that up. Because, it, I mean, basically what they're doing is, that's what they're doing, is they're trying to make a subscription-based game without having the subscription. Because you know that profits from, or not even profits, but money from um, the season pass is going towards these seasonal changes, like Season of the Forge and the changes that everybody gets. Like, we're contributing to that by buying the season, even though you get all of it without paying for it. Um, they just have to have money somewhere. They can't just make stuff for free, you know? Um, so I see why they did this. I just think it's really hard to get away from the DLC model when that's what people are used to for the last four years. Um, and people have those certain expectations. Um, initially, the one negative thing that I'll say, because um, I'm not put back at all by the power level stuff because i'm like oh that's you know i'll work up to it if it wasn't like if this wasn't the only thing we got people would have found the forger if a forge was something that happened in the middle of a season and we we're like oh look at this thing we would have been like awesome we can't do it yet it's hard let's you know get up our power level and go do it again and that's cool the problem is it's the only thing and i kind of felt like where is the new like even in Destiny 1, we would get all new Crucible gear, all new Vanguard gear, new weapons and new armor, and everything's exactly the same, seasonal and for the um, Black Armory. Whether you look at it in terms of the Season of the Forge or the Black Armory, all of it's the same. There's some new stuff scattered in there, but they didn't completely take away the old stuff and put in new stuff like they used to do, and that is kind of my, was an expectation that I had too that didn't happen. Did any of y'all expect anything like that? Yeah, I, I, I'm glad that you touched on that actually because I think that's one of the huge things, components that's missing from a content drop is a change in world drops. Mm -hmm. uh, vendor refreshes, you know, those sort of things. Yeah. Like that's things that we've come to expect with any sort of content drop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, we're used to doing the same content. That's not a big deal. We've run the same strikes for years in Destiny 1, now moving on to Destiny 2, but it's the new weapons and armor that freshen that experience up the next time that you go through it. You know, it's like not even necessarily freshen it, but it's some sort of sense of like um, accomplishment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're getting new stuff, you're trying it out. Maybe it, you know, has random roles. Maybe you got the curated role, like you and all your friends are talking about it, and you get to try it out with different nightfall modifiers and strike modifiers mm -hmm. and things like that but like all oh, right the the like instantly like getting thrown in and 
I'm a story guy. I, I'm under. I was very well aware that they were not doing a story. Mm-hmm. I was very well aware that this was going to be Endgame, and I endorsed it verbally. Like I was very, I was on board with this. Like I knew what they were trying to attempt, and I knew that it, what I was expecting, probably wasn't going to be the same after jumping in. And, you know what I mean? There's always like yeah. some. No matter how connected you are to the game, there's always going to be some form of a disconnect, like slightly. So like you know, jumping in. Going in, okay, we're in the tower. There's this hologram door that exists in the tower that we've had no idea about. Okay, we meet Ada. She's upset because her former master or forge master was killed by a guardian or a guardian had something to do with their death. So you set your base up underneath of them. Like, okay, I don't like bugs and creepy crawly shit, so I don't (laughs) build my house on top of the fucking Temple of Doom. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I... So... Already there's a disconnect. Hmm. And then it kicks in. Well, we're not going to know anything about this because there's no story. You know what I mean? So, like, it was the, like, the introduction, so many questions, and then you, the disappointment of you knowing that they're not going to touch on that because, like, I, I would have just will. rather, I would have rather have just gotten the quest and not even gone down to a new area and talked to someone. I would have rather have just had Spider give me the quest. You know what I mean? Like, and as far I'm okay with like the quest starting with like killing enemies and things like that. Like, that's totally uh-huh. fine. That's, that's what we do in destiny. That's, you know, that sort of thing. But like on day one, my initial thought was like, well, they kind of made it sound like the forge was going to be what we'd be doing to get us to the next forge and what we'd be doing to get to the raid and then the next forge or you know what i mean and like nobody kind of knew i feel like they could have said like you need to be 600 before attempting to jump into this so you guys need to catch up you know they could have conveyed that a little better and like on top of that like for those who aren't 600 there needs to be a better avenue towards reaching that currently so like blue drops blue world drops should be at least getting you to 600 so that you can start doing dreaming city crucible other milestones and stuff like that working towards 610 like that was my well they are changing prime engrams for under 600 <clears throat> they are but they haven't yet well mm-hmm. you know i know but i'm saying they're... i'm just telling you how people are feeling now people will feel yeah. differently after that changes but i'm talking about how people are feeling now day two or you know day three of the the content you know okay i just thought it was a pertinent time to mention that oh absolutely it's super important like uh, that is that's huge i think that's gonna like help people out a lot because most people are what um i mean i was fortunate enough to reach 600 like two days before the expansion drop but people are sitting what mostly 550 to 580 like right you know most people are in that range like it'd be cool if like blues just bumped them up close to 600 so that they can start doing like their other milestones and because i reached i have all my milestones done including leftover milestones from last season where you had to wear a full gambit gear full crucible gear win a match you know strikes and i only made it to and i did everything but dreaming city and i'm only at 606 i'm trying Mm. to get to 610 before i go back in because they did nerf that round three power level from 630 to 620 was it well dreaming city like, stuff will probably fine? get you close to 610 anyway because that's like your better yeah. drops yeah yeah those are you know you kind of want to save those for last right that's kind of what you want to uh, whatever the, i don't buy into the, that some theories are like <laughs> yeah. two i mean yeah both ways some people like to sprint out early and let the power engrams like stabilize you there potentially and then other people are like let me bump a little bit and let that one big jump give me like two or three pieces that are significantly higher I did it um, both ways on each character. But the thing, like, I, since we, you know, we're talking about it, we should probably say, like, what it was. They're um, upping the number of prime, if you're under 600, uh, mm-hmm. increasing the number of prime engrams you get and bumping up the power jump that they the give you. And That's they tried to do happen. that early, right? So they, they identified and said last week, like, 550 and below was their number. Now it's, like, 600, right? So five fi- below yeah. 550, we're supposed to get more albeit they weren't going to necessarily jump you up as much, right? It was just you'd get them more. Now it's below 600, and they'll bump you up more. So I don't That'll know if they didn't, a lot. they didn't realize – I don't want to say they didn't realize, but how many people were in that in that 
kind of space. I mean, I played with one person who was at 552 when they signed on, oh, knowing that. And I think we did mostly everything together. And the most they were able to get to is like 560. That's I rough. Think, yeah. So that, I mean, that's a little tough. And that was a person who didn't have the annual pass or the DLC, who I think at the time was not good going to then consider and get it either. Yeah. That's um, kind of like what one of my biggest fears with this whole thing is that like people are going to have a negative experience from this and it's going to yeah. alienate like like so with the raid this is the most important light level chase to raid that there is right now like you could get seriously screwed over by some rng drops like i got three primaries in a row that mm. were all like 602 yeah you know what i mean like so it's it's separate it's kind of separating the community already for this like raid chase and like my biggest fear is that like people um who have a, like a problem with this form of content drop is like it's going to alienate them and eventually make people lose interest and feel left out left behind who weren't 600 from the start you know like and that well, sucks like i don't want not only to that like that i want them to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel yeah not only that but like bungie like you said we want them to hit this out of the park because they needed more than just forsaken to keep bringing people back and to keep people continually playing um so everyone was kind of banking on the next things bungie does after forsaken to be like hitting it out of the park just like forsaken and then this was like not at all what people were thinking it was going to be mm -hmm. and like there's a lot of people that are making good light level gains like mm -hmm. grenader jake's already 650 but he I got that, extremely yeah. lucky and he does the three character system which like i don't have time don't for have time do. anymore yeah, like i can't it's such a great system but it's almost like until they made those changes which like i don't know if we've ever like it was such an overwhelming response that they changed it with just over 24 hours or just mm -hmm. under 24 hours like they made a, a pretty significant change to content by lowering that light level i don't I can't think of another time that they've ever done that. Hmm. You know what I mean? And like, I'm not like justifying it. I'm, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying like, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. It's pretty telling. You know what I mean? Like, and it, I think a huge majority of the outbursts on Twitter, um, I feel like a small majority of them are justified. I feel like the vocal, like the ones who were like being really shitty about it, like just kind of set expectations or maybe didn't really pay enough attention to what this was supposed to be hmm. but there are people like myself who are very well informed and were like on board with this and it kind of left a sour taste in their mouth but like it's it's not even we're not even done with week one yet yeah you know what I, mean? I have a sour three. taste yeah yeah exactly like i'm i've had a i had a sour taste in my mouth on day one and like it's like i said like i'm kind of starting to see where they're trying to come from and if we shoot this thing down before we even give it a chance it could be something great you know yeah. what i mean we, we really need to let this play out and see where this goes and let them at least attempt their vision right and what I they mean, want this game to be I, I hope i think you have a good counterpoint to this i'm sorry but i think you know just to add to what wilson's saying because i probably land somewhere in the middle of I do think there's merit in putting your best foot forward out the get-go because we know in so many things, and I'm not going to go on one of my societal tangents, but <laughs> there's usually, an, if there's an outcry for something, right, and a bunch of people crying out, when that fix happens, only X percent of those people actually stick around long enough for that. So when you talk about attrition, when you talk about the people who may or may not be patient, everyone knows there's an issue now, right? It's out in various articles. Maybe some articulated or play both sides better than others, but they're out there. Then Bungie does do an immediate fix. Well, how many, you know, maybe there's a day or two lag and when that next review comes out, well, they did fix this and this and now it's a little bit better. How many people stay around for that? I mean, the people that are going to stay around, they Bungie knows are going to stay around. But I think there is some merit to putting your best foot forward. Lego, you mentioned... You know, we knew this was the next thing. Wilson, you mentioned, you know, the get-go from someone who does play a lot was disappointed. So, I mean, I think there there is kind of an element of, like, you, you know, they had to have done this differently from the start, albeit I am in the camp of, you know, we give it time. It's day, like, two and a half, right, of total yeah. amount of you could play time. So, you know, obviously we're all going to stick around and play it, um, but I do think it's interesting that, you know, that wasn't what came out for it. And, and I said I've you know sample size of maybe one or two but there's some people who are now not sure about the annual pass based on where they're at and like when they'll ever get to a point where they can play yeah and i think on top of all that uh the 
it it's one of those things where um you it kind of requires time even if you give it time or not the change that they're making is so significant like wilson you were saying one of the guys i think you triton that one of the guys you were playing with didn't have the dlc yet um and they were such low light level well this is the first time that light level has been given like that expansion of light level has been given to all players regardless of whether you have the dlc or not that wasn't the case previously so people who had lower light levels have a lot to go um and it it, we it's like you have to give it time to play out because it's kind of opened the doors to new possibilities that weren't really possible before like somebody just having the base game yet being able to level up as much as they want to um and so stuff like that is just going to take time plus the way this new season is released weekly basically or bi-weekly it's going to be interesting to see like what comes out and how people how happy people are once they see the full amount of content they get like i'm sure like this in no way is enough to pay money for how much we paid for the next three updates basically that we get but that we paid all that up front and you kind of just have to wait and see how yeah, much it delivers part of it Keep yeah, in mind. and I hope I, I want to let you keep talking too, but I'm going to go ahead and take off. I just wanted to get that in. And yeah, I say, kicked Lego off the podcast. <laughs> and say uh, <laughs> basically that I'm looking forward to what's to come. I'm not going to make any rash decisions. Maybe it feels weird a little bit going in and it not being like a normal <laughs> DLC. I mentioned. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say that's caught a really me by good way surprise. Of it, though, Lego, like it's. Uh, I, I want to back that up that like as much as I want to pass judgment on it, <clears> it's too fucking early. Yeah, yeah, and I and I want y'all to flesh it out even more than that. I just want to give my <laughs> like summary there, um, because of course mm. I want to devour it like crystal meth, you know. Um, but <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and uh, play this ukulele until we get all oh the updates coming. Uh, but <laughs> um, for real though, I I'm just gonna take my time with it. You know, I'm treating it as an update, not just Black Armory, but the season of the Forge together in unison. And so I have three pinnacle weapons to chase. I haven't got any of them yet. Cool. And so I'm just gonna keep doing that. And as this stuff comes, I might do that too. I might do this Forge that comes out and that's kind of where i'm at in summary before you leave i do want to point out that this stuff on its own that we're getting over the next few weeks Mm -hmm. three forges a raid you know all that stuff that's ten dollars when you're talking about not paying like Mm -hmm. if you were just like i just want to get this it's ten bucks man like no i know but to the perception of the person who spends that money who maybe like buying a game is a big deal for them and they paid the what is the full price 30 40 it's more like 35. 12 bucks and yeah, you 35. have to pay the 35 up front so up front that's I, the I get how you're justifying yeah. it by breaking it down but you do have like you are charged 35 dollars. you have to think of it both ways yeah but i i see it from the standpoint you do hove and i see all of destiny that way i like i've put you know hundreds of hours into the game and i've very well got my money's worth so i'm not concerned about that but i know other people are um but yeah so i'm just gonna wait it out and see how it goes it was fun chatting with you boys and you podcasters i'm gonna let the rest of the guys where are you going take it away uh (laughs) you can find me over on crucible radio on monday gonna go record an episode with them uh and i will see y'all next time he's leaving us for crucible radio forever peace (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> He's a traitor. <laughs> um, I had I, there were so many things over the course of that that I wanted to say and I forget them all now. Uh, uh, basically, like really quick, like I um the forge, like you know what is destiny end game? Grinding weapons for the perfect god roll. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what the forge is supposed to be. So I understand that being a part of the end game. A big fear of mine with that is that if these weapons aren't really good like really good like ep shoddy good like there's gonna not be a huge want or reason for people to go and grind these out if there's already like other better like meta weapons you know what i mean it's like these things got to be like really good and i know they've introduced some new um some new perks and new mods and stuff like that that you can put in that are really going to help um uh some synergy between you know some of these perks that'll kind of help out a little bit you know and um but that's like one of my biggest fears is that like man these forge weapons got to be good or like people are still going to be using ep shoddy and I, I my thing like and this goes back to just the whole you know all, all of you guys have said it you know it's day 3 it's week 1 right um i'll get to the whole jumping into this uh, into the forge into the black armory light level all that in a minute but i i think it's important to note 
that it's there's a forge that came out and that's all that we got we which we know we've covered i'll talk about but then tomorrow we get a friday we get another forge yep. right and a raid and a raid and then next week we get the dawning and uh-huh. then there's another forge i mean there's there's three of these things like every week we're like we're getting something yeah they're all very small but it kind of made me think and lego kind of started off with this and i didn't really see his i don't want to say i didn't see his point but i i wasn't on board with it as much until i thought about it this way but like it's kind of just a continuation of what they've been doing all through forsaken right every week the dreaming city changed and locked different ascendant challenges and it, 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 the store do you know what i mean like every week we kind of got something through there this is really just a continuation of the way they've been doing things right it's just now it's an annual pass like we got the first year right. for you know base uh curse war mind and then forsaken and now we're into you know they're they're pricing it differently and they're talking about it differently and i do think it's it's they probably could have worded it a little better but i i think right. they're probably also handcuffed a little bit because the only way to mm. really get across what it was would be Reveal hey it. we're adding well, no, no, not even that but like we're adding a new end game this is just end game but do you think and maybe I, I i don't know but do you think that higher ups whether it be activision or within bungie are going to let them come out and say we're not giving you this we're not giving you this we're not giving you this like that's just bad like no one's going to let them market it that way well they i mean they said they're not bringing back trials and faction rallies you know what i mean like but that's that's different. I mean, that's that's people asking. Those were supposed to be a free um, activity that was supposed to stay throughout Destiny Two, and I understand that roadmaps change and plans change and stuff like that. But those were supposed to be two pinnacle activities that were like always supposed to be in the game. You know what I mean? I just think it's bad timing for those to be pulled out too, like on top of all of this. You know what I mean? They've and been pulled like, out there. That's nothing new. They've been pulled out. I know people, a lot of people didn't care about faction rallies, but like I did. Like a couple of my favorite weapons, like the Maxim sniper rifle, you know, one of my favorite crucible snipers to use over uh, even a lot of the new ones. Um, but like it would be cool to like have those back. Like it would be cool to like know if Trials is coming back, not when, but like if, you know, like certain things that would kind of help alleviate the stress but like if people if we want our appetite satiated with this game we it's have never to go gonna to happen this, well no we have to go to this plan we have to you know like an annual pass thing we have to help them put put bread on they gotta help them get that bread you know put bread on the table you know and uh people aren't used to that you know games not a lot of people are used to that whole games as a service thing but like that's the way it is, you know, and like how you broke it down earlier, like, yeah, it is $35 and technically it's only 10 for this content. Like I've spent $10 on stuff and got way less enjoyment out of it, time and enjoyment out of it. Like go to the movie theaters for 10 bucks. Yeah. Good luck. You know, you're, you can't even buy a ticket in a get big a, theater anymore. Maybe get a ticket at a ghetto <laughs> ass theater. You know what I mean? Like, and you're not going to get any snacks or nothing, you know, like, so I do think the value is there. Uh, I'm the type of person that um, we were playing Crucible the other night and just having a damn good time, you know? Like, I just kind of let go of the PvE grind thing and the whole, just everything that was going on with Annual Pass that people were talking about on Twitter and was like, I'm just going to grab a group of Guardians, go into the Crucible, and get back to, you know, what's fun. And at the end of the day, like, if you're with your friends, like, at least me personally dude, I don't give a damn what we're doing in the game as long as we're having fun. Like that <laughs> time we did the Ascendant Challenge a couple weeks ago, Hope, we had the greatest damn time. You'd have thought it was like our first time in the raid or something. Oh my God, that like, shit was funny as... I we can. had a blast, dude. And it's just, you know, with the homies and stuff like that. And like, like I said, as salty as I was about this at first, like, I mean, I still definitely like have some... I'm kind of on edge about it, but like, it's so early to like pass final judgment. And like, it's okay if you like... I'm not going to make it into the raid tomorrow. I'm probably not even going to make it into the first forge this week. You know, like it'll be okay. The game will be there. Like it, I get it. It sucks that it feels like we were thrown back into forsaken with a 50 light level increase as far as milestones go. But 
And I it's understand so that that's why how some people feel, but like at the same time, like back in D1, we kind of did a lot of the the same shit over and over. Like, yeah, we got new strikes, which in turn gave us new nightfalls and stuff like that. But we were still doing some of the same old strikes, like Omnigool and you know shit like Prime that. Prime Servitor, just, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Um. Oh God, what the hell was his name? Um. I don't know. Help um, us out here, chat. The big servitor in D1. But like it was like the very first strike, wasn't it? Was it it goes it goes back to um Sepix Prime cast Sepix a great Prime. shadow yeah. over our city. <laughs> That's what it, mm-hmm. Um but I feel like it goes back to what I was saying about like maybe introducing some new world drops in there. You know what I mean? Like when before this content dropped, I was in the patrol zones shooting those guys that were spawning in early with the shields around them in hopes that I'd get a legendary drop with a, a new weapon. You know what I mean? Where are those drops? Where are those weapons at? Like put them in not even necessarily a strike specific loot, but like make, make some of those drop throughout the world. And they don't even necessarily have to be higher light, but just like new sauce. You know what I mean? That's what we want. We want that new sauce. Um, Real quick. What I was saying, even though like we got all this stuff, like, we just got the Forge. I feel like if you took all of this stuff, like, if, if this week, on Tuesday, we got, you know, whatever, three new Forges and that, because uh, then there's a fourth thing, La- something, La- Niobe Labs. So there's, like, four yeah, new yeah. things. Yeah. So really, I mean, it, is it that much different in what we're presumably going to get than what we used to? Or are they just spreading it out over weeks? Like, if, if you came in today, and yeah, there was still a light level grind. Like I said, I still want to get to that. We just keep getting off. Um, <laughs> if they were like, here's f- three new forges, this labs thing, and a raid. That's about as much content as we would get out of any other small DLC, right? I mean, it's, For sure. No, for sure. So, it, like, like I said, I think a lot of it's the model, and it's the fact that it's the transition, I think, is going to be mm. a problem. Right. Uh, like, like some I of the said, labels if, used with, with point. The, how it came out in the wording we've talked about. It's a good and, point, Hope. And right. so, I mean, I I think all in all, when all is said and done, I think it's going to work out pretty well. There's still a lot of stuff, because it's funny, even the people complaining, and uh, like I said, it's not perfect. There's some things I want to touch on, but there's st- even those people are like, next month we still have this and we're getting the last word and there's four exotics and, and there's these different things. Like there's that mysterious box you found and like there's still, th- and, and Bungie has said many times, uh, we talked about it last week, I think specifically in the one interview, they were like, Oh yeah, there's going to be a lot of secrets. Like we can't even yeah. give you any hints about them. So like, we're thinking, Oh, there's this forge and they're like, we're done, but people aren't thinking ahead. And I, and that's how Bungie mm-hmm. I think is, planning on doing this you know we do know that things are getting released kind right. of time gated but I, I just think there's more to it than we're seeing right off the bat um now while i wasn't super upset about it uh i i do understand some of the frustration with the immediate kind of light level halt or power level halt you know when you, when you hit 600 yeah. uh I, I know they did lower it a little bit but i think especially since there's a precedent that they've done similar things to this before, I feel like it was a missed opportunity to maybe this first week of the season before Black Armory came out to let your milestone start dropping above 600 to let some people get uh, Mm -hmm. a a jump. Um, Now, that wouldn't help so much, you know, the people under 600, but this Prime Engram thing on top of that would. Uh, The other thing, going back, Wilson, you were talking about, you know, this, this power level grind to this raid, you know, kind of... Uh, separating some of the community. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're wrong by any means, but a like I feel like this is the exact same conversation we have every time a new raid comes out. Um, and b anybody who's still not 600 now, you know, and I'm not talking 590, 595. I'm talking people that are far off. Yeah, I don't think those are the people who are going to give a shit if they get to raid power level by tomorrow, by Friday, in three days. If over three months they didn't get to max, do you think they're going to go for max in three days? Like those aren't the same people, right? Right. And, and like, and like, I totally hear you. Hear what you're saying. I just saying that this is the first content drop that we've never had anything that catches you up. Like we've yeah. always had that. You know, blues drops kind of get you to the soft, soft cap. Then there's like, like the, the legendary machines, soft right? cap. You know what I mean? And like they didn't necessarily have to do it that way, but maybe some 
form of like avenue to get them to 600 before doing their milestones because there are a lot of people who were in the 580 to 590 range who want to go in on friday but they're not going to have any fucking chance even if they do the three character thing they're not going to be anywhere near ready to do that and you know I, what i mean i do want to point you are right it is a conversation that it seems to come around yeah every, and i'm not saying like don't talk about it but like it just no, this sure. starts to sound so familiar it's like we have these... different this time around yeah though, it's always slightly like, different but like it, yeah but like we've always had that avenue of like blues getting you like pass up like once you get done with the story and obviously there's no story but like you know blues would get you to a certain point where you start need to worrying about um end game stuff you know what i mean and it would just be cool to see more of that like but you're totally right like it's 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 a little different but it's not like it's kind of the same old but like it's i just thought it was like unique this time around because like you are up shit's creek like no matter how badly you want to go into the raid on friday if you weren't 600 and just because you were 600 do we know that do mean... we know what the power level is for the raid Mm. I've heard so many different numbers, Hove. Like I've heard that it's probably going to start out like six thirty in the final. Yeah, I've heard six thirty is like a. That seems really high to recommend. Me, it does. It does, but the forge was supposed to be six thirty. You know what I mean? I like that final, that final that final engagement was six thirty, and that's not even the raid. So. Well, I don't know. I, I think I, this is this is completely different. So who knows? Yeah, it's, I mean, I, there's really no precedent for guessing yep i mean yeah. there's there's yeah. similar things but um well, mm -hmm. hope you brought up a point in there though that i think to, to me makes a lot of sense because i you know coming full circle with my comments earlier about the people that you'll lose initially i mean this is really the first dlc that i feel like targets us i was gonna say we're not going too, we're yeah. not going to give up on destiny we're gonna play it probably when we get off here we're gonna do we're gonna play it tomorrow all those things it really came after the people that are going to buy things like those special edition destinies people that are gonna buy the pop figures people that are gonna play the game they're gonna buy all the dlcs i mean at this point in time we're year four of a 10-year plan potentially and we're thinking like i mean bungie has to know these are people who are going to keep playing mm -hmm. so the things that they really want we're going to do because a lot of those people in day two and now you're seeing in day three have arrived to a oh okay it's not so bad they did the one thing for us and now let's just wait and see some of us got there early some of us you know i'm kind of a little bit in wilson's camp too like I, it would be cool to have had an activity to get us to that point but i'm not going to give up on the game either just because that and i'm mm -hmm. not going to just like tell people not to buy the annual pass but the people it's going to lose so my point with having a friend that might not have considered buying the annual pass well he didn't buy it anyways right now right so he doesn't even have it right now so he's not even kind of financially supporting going for it as is and, and maybe bungie understands that to agree but they don't want to lose the person who has put in that's going to mm -hmm. consistently do that and to be honest with you that's not a bad decision to make at this point and i think it just comes down to maybe a little bit of presentation a little bit of wording because i also think this is actually the third week where if we talked about communication right two weeks ago where's the roadmap last week great roadmap and now we're back to well they could have said this instead of this and that instead of that so you know, at the end of the day, it targeted the people that are pretty much on this podcast. I think we're all going to have kind of a, a similar end uh, decision on it. And if it loses some of the people at the margins that it was naturally going to lose, you know, I don't... I, yeah, perf I, I guess I'm in the perfectly okay with what's going on, Camp, uh, more or less, with tweaks here and there, of course. Yeah, and, and I, I was actually going to say the same thing, uh, very close to it. Um, the more I, I, I see these things and the more we talk about it and kind of maybe see where they're going with things you know we had talked for a long time especially after d2 that you know they kind of made you know that whole if you make a game for everyone you make a game for no one type of thing and they lost mm -hmm. a lot of people and we know that mm -hmm. and yeah. i mean activision has said it like every like we know that a lot of people were unhappy with and a lot of it was the ease of destiny 2 like you just kind of got everything right. and then there was nothing yep. to do and I, I granted, I've still to this day, even through Forsaken, have heard a lot of people say, like, I preferred that. I don't have time, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I, I don't mean blah, 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 blah is like saying right. that what they're saying is not important. Just you get you get where I'm going with that. Um, right. It's the first time and maybe Forsaken was kind of a prep for that. Now that we see where they're moving, um, they had to make a choice, I feel like, in who they were catering the game to. Um, and a lot of the people, the people that have stuck with it, the people that still play, you know, wanted it to be a, a more grindy, long-term 
put some time into it to really get everything type of game. And like Triton said, those are the people who are going to keep buying it. And don't get me wrong, I'm completely sympathetic to anybody who just like oh, yeah. likes the gunplay or, or likes shooting aliens, but only gets to play an hour a week. Maybe they sit yeah. down one day. But like, I don't know. One, I still feel like a lot of the people who say, oh, I don't have time to do this. They're still playing. That's why they're still, they know what's going on. They're involved. But I just feel like you're right, Triton. Like they, they had to make a choice. This is the way they went. You know, the people who have stuck around and are vocal and or have played all the of game. them. Yeah, yeah. Are the people who have been asking for it to take longer to, to do way. things, to Absolutely. be this way. Um, and I mean, you have to like, if you want to do something a lot, like you have to make sacrifices in life like i've and i'm not like oh i play the game a lot woe is me like i've sacrificed all this shit but like dude it's not going out to the bar on the weekends it's not going out to eat and deciding to eat in or just order you know delivery or something you know it's you know i don't hell all my best friends are playing the game you know it sounds crazy meet your best friends through a game you know what i mean but like dude i've alienated a lot of my friends to choose to like sit at home and play a game or multiple games it's not just destiny you know a lot of us we play other games you know whether it be watch PUBG, you know whatever and uh it <laughs> you do have to make sacrifices and i know some people can't because they have children or they don't have a roommate to help them split bills and stuff like that and <laughs> it's gonna sound really un like sympathetic but like you know, shit, I can't make, you know, mountain climbing my hobby is bad luck. Can't make, you know, traveling the world my hobby. Granted, that's a financial thing. That's, you know, but that's a whole new argument, you know, like, and there's just, like I said, it sounds really unsympathetic and shitty, but like, you know, not everyone Maybe can make a certain thing their either. hobby. You're right. And, and Wilson, you brought up the games, like you're making a choice to play this. You're sacrificing time, whatever time you do have to play this game over another game, even if you're playing some other one. So, you know, Bungie has that obligation to give you a reason to pick this game going mm. forward. And if you're one of the people that are going to play it for your free time, then they need to give you something to continuously chase mm-hmm. in order to do that. Otherwise, you won't. You will pick Overwatch and all the things they're doing more than you will pick Destiny. So yeah. I 100% agree. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I, I think the final... and. I, like you said, it kind of sounds shitty. And I don't mean this as in I'm saying this to those people, but like it comes down to this is the direction they want to go because of all the reasons we just listed. If that doesn't fit into what you like to do, maybe this is no longer with the new direction, the game for you. And, and like I said, I'm not saying games. that. I don't, I don't, I don't want it to sound like I'm telling these people, like maybe you got to stop playing, but like, dude, I was crushed when armor lock came out in halo. Stop playing forever. Haven't played Halo since. You know what I mean? Like it things change in games that suck and things change in life that suck. And like <laughs> that's all you're gonna see as you continue to grow older is change. And some of it you're not gonna be okay with and some of it you're gonna be okay with. Like it it's okay to, to like if this isn't no one's pressuring you to stay around like I'm only gonna be your friend if you play Destiny. Like sure you might not play as many games afterwards but like you know it's not like friendships are on the line here like you know they're said if you try, decide to go play another game like mm. some people will listen to you my my friendship is conditional <laughs> but it you know and unfortunately you know there might be some people like that which better off with them not in your life anyway but we should get to the twab you guys want to do the twab what's a twab you want me to, you want me to do the twab there's so, some wait basically some goodness yeah 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 well, no, you know what? I don't know. We'll see. I do want to say, though, quickly, <laughs> just to sum up. So, I mean, we're, we're all – we all kind of initially kind of grasped it slightly differently, I feel like. But I mm-hmm. feel like we're all kind of in, in agreement here that, like, it has potential. You know, it's, it's a big change. And I don't think there was any other way to kind of transition to this – could have been worded better but like when Mm. you go from large drops with nothing in between to spreading it out that first time was always no matter what gonna feel like well what is this what did we get right i mean Mm -hmm. right i I feel like that was unavoidable 
Absolutely. I think that's a fair way of putting it. Like I've probably been a little bit on the other side of it than most people on the podcast, but ultimately like I am interested to see how this plays out. And I ultimately do think that once people get into the forge and start experiencing some of the stuff and it's coming out, they will enjoy it and they will see that hopefully they will see the bigger picture. That is one thing I meant to point out before when you were talking about, I'm not saying it completely replaces some of the things, but you were talking about, you know, like weapon refreshes and, and there's mm-hmm. and all that stuff. I don't know how much you looked into because I didn't realize it first and I'm not saying it's as big as full refreshes across all right. factions and everything, but with the forge, you know, you do it this first time for the heavy machine gun, the hammerhead, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, hammerhead. And then once you do that, it unlocks a bunch of other frames and bounties. She becomes a full vendor right. with other guns that you then have to forge and go do mm-hmm. the forge again. So, I mean, to be getting these like a week apart, not even a week, because we're getting one for tomorrow and then next week, right? Or two weeks. Either way, right. we get three this month. Two weeks. Do we get one tomorrow and then not the week after? Because but then of the dawning. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, it's not just do the forge for this gun and then you're done. It then unlocks more frames for different weapons from there on Absolutely. out. So, uh, it, like I said, it has potential. So. Some pretty cool looking ones, too, mind you. I really want that hand cannon. I want um, your yeah. hand I mean, I'm with cannon. Wilson, too. I mean, hopefully they're good. Like, they're replaced. Not replaced, but, like, they don't <laughs> fall short of what some of the meta weapons are. And I think, yeah, just kind of end capping the combo. I think my thing is, like, if there was a big... But the people I think Bungie really made this for are probably lost almost nobody uh well, more or less um do you guys I think like... the forges will be different each one will be different you think it's gonna be the exact i hope they're kind varied in like objective and thing i i, yeah. I hope it's I'm, slightly different it's, it's gotta be it's slightly like, different somehow yeah it's not... like it's gotta like a different planet location that's a given yeah um different enemy type variant that's a given probably um i just like because it's really like it's a cool it's a cool activity but it's not like the most engaging, incredible thing. You're I don't think it'll be a that ball. different. I wouldn't get your hope. I wouldn't get my hopes up to think it's going to be like a completely no, different I activity. I don't think it's going to be too much different. I agree, 100%. Yet. I think it's going to be um, the exact same thing. Pretty. I, I think it'll be close, maybe with some yeah. variants. Uh, the one thing with the guns being better, uh, nothing, I don't even want to get into this because it's something that would be an entire show in itself. <laughs> but the issue then becomes with that if you keep making everything that comes out better, you start running into the whole like power creep issue. Um, eventually. yeah, but then there's also a thing called power. Like there's the opposite of that. Right. And I'm not saying they should all be worse, but you have to be careful. You can't just have like, right. Well, they here's, be... here's how good, here's the shotgun we have. That's really good. The next one needs to be better. And then the next one needs to be better. They just need to be different and varied. And they've started to do a little better job with like random roles and, and they need to be fun and, and interesting and right. viable. But like that's the three things. Like it, it's not, it doesn't have to be better in the next broken thing. Um, I probably should have worded that a little bit better. Um, no, like, I mean no, you you're make right. A good point. You make a good point. Power creep is a thing, and the opposite of that is a thing too, which is what we have experienced before in the past. And I feel like they're doing a really good job of new weapons feeling yeah. good and interesting, and that you want to get them and play with them, and you know get them in your hands and shoot some aliens with them. Um, but if they're not, that's the problem. You know, like that. That's all I right. was trying to say. They don't have to be the next broken thing, but they got to be fun. Right. They got to be viable, and they have to have a place in the meta, which I guess yep. goes with viable. But like, I think yeah. I have so, no, I'm just gonna say that. That's my fear. If they're not those things, nobody's gonna want to do the forge unless there's maybe one weapon that is. Right, you know. I mean, you chase the one, the one. Thing. Yeah, and then and then that sucks because you're just chasing one weapon. You I know? do want to point out though that with any of these activities, it, you also have to take a lot of what people say with a grain of salt because I don't know how many times mm. I've heard people say, "Yeah, this is stupid. I'm not doing it," and then they're in there all the time anyway. So right. I do want to point that yeah. out. <laughs> I think having the targeted purpose and Wilson, that's pretty much how you summed up your um, your thoughts on it is what's important. Like, and we've seen that with some of the guns that in the quest that we got last week right like so breakneck is really good at at Mm. ad clear and mod Mm -hmm. clear so if each of those guns and and to host point not not necessarily break the meta and they're used everywhere like the ep shoddy mostly is until i mean even with the trench barrel probably still is but as long as they have a 
yeah, as long as they have a pointed purpose, this is good in this situation. So you can go, okay, well, now I'm doing Gambit. I'm going to use Breakneck, right? It's super fun, clears the ads. Well, I'm going to do this activity in Strikes. Maybe, I don't know, loaded question doesn't seem to be as well received. But you know what I mean? Like if they have mm -hmm. a pointed purpose, then they're worth chasing all of them if you're doing a lot of the content or just worth ch chasing one if that's the content you do continuously. So um, I th and I think it's going to be that way based on those quests, right? Now, I don't know about the mountaintop, the grenade launcher per se, but... Dude, the new fusion is good for um, the forge, uh, especially mm -hmm. on Earth. So our strategy was to, just to stay on that right side where the cave is. Don't even utilize mm -hmm. two-thirds of the map. Did you do and it with working... Dewey? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. working really well. Yeah, and uh, I have that fusion rifle, and they and, and ads group up over there in those caves, man, and it nice. just blows them up, dude. It's just chain reaction, just, mm -hmm. you know, just going off. And um, so, yeah, it is cool, like... And I think that's basically, I think that's a really good point, Triton, is that they really did make some of those guns like really interesting and fun to use and have like a purpose. All right. So the TWAB. Right? We good with the TWAB? TWAB. Are you canning it over to Wilson or are you doing it? Oh, I can do it. Wilson's. Yeah, muting Hope's got it. I just want to say he's... one thing before he does, and that's. No. Okay, go ahead. Eva Levante. She's done. Lanny's potato. Um. <laughs> It's the shader lady, What dude. did you say, Triton? <laughs> I'm not saying it again. Also, Wilson, have you used any of your words? Uh, no. God, you're the worst. Sorry, I've been all, like, semi-business tonight. I'm sorry. I mean, like, you couldn't have fit those words in there somewhere. Um, I'm sorry, dude, I'm slipping, man. Like, like, like a little slipping slide. So, so anyway, gonna... <laughs> they start out talking about, you know, the, the climb past 600 power and all that. We've discussed a lot of that. Um, coming mm. with, on December 11th, is when they're going to change the prime end grams for under 600 power that we discussed uh, more often with larger power bumps. Um, pretty much. Then they go straight into scourge of the past, which is the new raid that opens uh, tomorrow, Friday, depending on when you're listening to this. Uh, there is a small trailer there. I didn't watch it because I don't, I didn't want to. Did you guys watch it? Yes. Um, not that spoilery. Okay. Um, with that being said, if you don't want to know anything about it, then don't watch it. Stay off the internet for 48 hours, you know, like, because there's going to be a lot of people talking about this raid, so plan accordingly. So, uh, design lead Brian Frank talks a little bit. Um, he's just saying, you know, it's in the last city. You have to recover a forgotten secret of the Black Armory. Uh, make sure you grab the final chest, you know, if you're going for, like, Worlds First, because that's when it, it gets completed. Uh, kind of the same thing as last time. Anyone who, um, first 24 hours, you'll get the Scourge of Nothing emblem. Uh, but you do get some extra time for the jacket. You'll have until 9 a.m. on the 12th, which is Wednesday, right? 9 a.m. Mm. Pacific, because the 11th is when that next, yeah, that's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that'll get you, you know, you can get your code to purchase the jacket. Um... That wasn't that big of a window last time, was it? No. The no, jacket was like 24 not. hours, right? I can't remember. They moved something, didn't they? Yeah, I thought the jacket was the weekend, the belt, I thought. Wait, belt the jacket was just World's being first. the weekend, right? Okay, belt was World's first. Yeah. Did they extend the jacket because of how hard it was? I want to say, I, mean, I, agree with I Wilson, could be wrong, but, but I think like... something got extended. But still, I don't think anything was to Wednesday. Yeah, no, it wasn't no. that long. I think it was just the weekend this for last week. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. I'd like to see the raid. Uh, they said it's, you know, bigger than a raid layer, smaller than Last Wish, but they made it sound like it was bigger than, like, Crota. I want to say someone specifically said it was bigger than Crota, which is a good start, in my opinion. Um, and they compared it combat-wise to Wrath of the Machine, which I thought was really cool in that sense. It was a little bit faster paced, a little less puzzly. Still puzzly, if that's a word. I hate puzzles. I'm so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm excited for it. We'll see. Uh, next, they move on. They give they they wanted to address some feedback about the Crucible. Uh, they said their top issue reported is matchmaking in the comp playlist. Uh, they're investigating. Blah 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 blah. We'll have details when we can. Which I'm sure people were gonna say. Oh, all they said was that we'll talk about it later. But like we always ask them to just say like, hey, we're discussing this. You know, yeah. blah blah blah. We, they can't tell us what they're doing if they don't know yet. 
Uh, then they talked about uh, power ammo. Um, they're changing it in a lot of different things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just going to run through this quickly. In competitive, for control, initially, initial timer is the same. But for heavy spawns after that, it went from 45 seconds to 120 seconds, which is a big, big difference. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly the same for Clash. And survival, initial is the same, and it goes from 45 mm-hmm. to 60 seconds. And I think that's just because rounds are – they're it's round-based, right? So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, we'll see how it works out, but it's it's the right direction, right? It's less yeah. heavy. Uh, we asked for that. In rotators, in showdown, initials the same. It went from 30 to 60 seconds. And in rumble, initials the same. Went from 60 to 120 seconds. So, just, you know, power ammo less often. That's a pretty pretty quick way to I'm okay to, with this for now. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see. see. I, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Um, but I agree. It was getting a little what? cray-cray there for a minute. You're a little cray-cray. Fucking ward cliff. <laughs> Everywhere, like. <laughs> um... Then they go on to it's it it gets everywhere. I don't know what they're talking about, but I have a problem. It, it gets somewhere. gets everywhere. Yeah, I get it. You know what they're talking yeah. about. <laughs> um, this is a little bit more sandbox related. Um, and he's saying you know with PvP and PVE, this is Josh Hammer or I'm sorry, Joe uh, John Sandwich. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so it's PvP, PvE. They said they hear a lot of just like kind of opposite camps in a lot of these. Um, so they're trying to take a combination, which is something I think it's important to point out that no matter how many people you know that think something, there's people on the other side of it and they have to hear both sides. So like you're not always going to get exactly what you ask for. It's like Santa, you know, he doesn't always give you what you want. Uh, first ones, <laughs> can you buff snipers? We would really like flinch to be reduced and have more mm. lower zoom scopes. Um, first, he says snipers are definitely something they're looking at and making changes to. Um, in January, rapid fire snipers will be make becoming two shot body kill, and they're looking to make more snipers one shot supers to the head. Hallelujah! Good, I'll take it. Uh, they do point out lower zoom scopes are in the game, but have not been particularly pre- prevalent with post forsaken weapons, and have been largely limited to a few weapons. But we'll be increasing the number of them in the game as we move forward. Which is great because nobody, unless the sniper does something co- totally different, nobody wants to use a long scope unless they have to, right? Right. Um, but they don't have any plans to alter flinch, but they'll keep paying attention. Open minded. Uh, Nova Warp, they are going to look at and change in January. Uh, Spectral Blades mm. hit detection feels better. Can the other melee supers get the same? They're still looking at that. Um, and that a lot of pre-forsaken subclasses feel underpowered. And he says that, again, the patch for late January, they have planned buffs. He specifically says buffs um, for other subclasses. I do want to point out a lot of these, you know, they're saying this patch in January. I think one thing that's important to point out, doesn't make it any sooner, but we know this, that after, like, next week, they're on vacation yeah, until January. So nothing mm-hmm. is going to happen. So if they're working on things now... They're going to finish and test when they get back, and that's why your next patch is going to be in January. Totally That's fine just the that, way it right? is. There's no yep. point in complaining, praising, yep. talking about. That's just how it is. They should get holiday time, too. Yeah, And they have to be somewhat close to those things, you would think, too. So this isn't like a new, oh, we didn't know about this thing. You know, to right. this point, it's like something, hey, we're going on vacation. It. We've known this, and it's coming. And yeah. it's mostly they're... done because we're all going to be gone. Yeah, and they're talking about it, so. Yeah. Uh, Top exotics like One-Eyed Mask, Shards of Galanor, any changes. They don't have any immediate plans, but they'll keep looking at them as we talk about it. It's out there. Um, Telesto, they will be changing the bolts to kill to match its charge rate. Uh, it was Really a- look at Telesto and One-Eyed Mask. Like, when you think you've looked it over enough, just give a look over, you Just know? quit your bitching. Um, just see how we have the magnifying glass. Really so get in there. Not only are they doing that... <laughs> uh, it's still going to be more consistent because of the, the explosions that don't affect fall-off damage, but they are going to increase damage in PvE to kind of help with that uh, so that it's still strong in PvE. Yeah. They're going to continue to look at scout rifles. Uh, they just made buffs to SMGs, so they'll keep an eye on that. Mm. Um, they brought up damage in rapid-fire fusion rifles, and he'll continue to look at that. Wave splitter, they're going to continue to look at that. 
Titan Skating on PC. Um, same idea. They're going to continue to look at that. I'm just going to keep saying that. They're but so uh, quick. I don't know how they could see it, but one well, no, the problem <laughs> with that they're saying um, it, the way it works is is so closely tied to the core feel of lift. In other words, we don't want a Titan Skating fix to change the way lift ability feels for all players. We'd love to have a simple fix to this issue we could roll out immediately, but this one is going to take us a while to land on something solid. I bet it does. It sounds like it's something that's like really deep in the code. Like I don't even think it's so much that they don't know how to physically do it. I just think it's, like they said, they don't want lift to become a completely different like a, jump. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, this well, they is also different. don't want to make it come unusable either. Exactly. Like they, they could easily nerf it to the ground. Boom, no more time. But then no one, yeah. It's a, it's a delicate balance. So a lot of that was, hey, these are what we know you're talking about, and yep. um, we're looking at it, which is funny because I've already heard people complain that that's all they said. But when we're at the times where we're talking about stuff, I've everyone complains, just tell us that you know this is what we want. So I, I don't yeah. – winner or lose. Anything else you guys got on any of those? I mean, there's not much info there. It's good to hear, though, that they're like, look, we're, we're, we get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like acknowledgement is huge see and, and, and i, I think, was go ahead i just think to, the way they went through telesto and talked about the changes are going to make in you know one arena but not the other they're going to buff it in the pv those are, that's a perfect example i think the kind of things that we want so i we kind of took that as an example for all the things they're saying we're looking at it i would expect some kind of delivery along those lines for all those topics just because it's a it is a balance wilson mentioned balance we know that this is an issue. We still want to keep this exotic. We want this to be usable. We want people to be able to do it. So hopefully for all the things that are, we'll talk about it. I think that's the treatment we'll get in some or in some fashion. Um, and, and the difference, I know we kind of t- covered it a little bit, but you know, you were saying how it's something, how, how deep in the code or whatever, Wilson for the Titan skating mm-hmm. that does uh, kind of apply to something that I think is in here somewhere, but it's been talked about elsewhere. The matchmaking issue with, blind well that's going on and even though they've kind of worked with it they said like this is something we're continue to look at um you know it's it's a large bug we don't know you know blah 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 so until then enter the area slowly and hug the right one Mm -hmm. pro tip uh got anything else in here uh not in this one is there another one is there another twob the dawning bro what's the dawning Oh man, I'm so glad Why don't you, you asked. Tell me about the dawning. Oh, <laughs> um, basically, uh, we had the dawning last year. Um, it was really cool. A lot of people didn't like the microtransactions, but that's God been damn it. That's been completely overhauled. This one's no, gonna be no. This lit. has nothing to do with that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about we were talking about deep code. Yeah. And Gornyak and Chat said, "How deep is your code?" And now all I can hear in my head, you know that song, "How deep is your love?" Wait, what? What all can you hear in your head? Thank yeah, you. we lost your mic. Oh yeah, you you cut yeah, out. You know that only. song, "How Deep Is Your Love." Um. Now all I can hear is "How Deep Is Your Code." That's great. I just got jelly all over myself because Sam brought me a peanut butter, big lot jelly. <laughs> what so kind I'm of jelly? Kind of distracted. I'm distracted at the moment. But what I... kind of jelly? Um, hold on. Welsh's grape. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't tell by the fact that it was purple. It's on my shirt. I don't know. It's everywhere. I mean, are you all right? Help, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, moving on to the dawning. Anytime you're done cleaning up and want to jump in, I know you're excited, but I, I you know, I'm going to, I'm going to. It's move. everywhere. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Eva Levante is coming back, which it's funny because they just had a bunch of lore with her recently. Dewey's been all excited that they, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so yeah, it's coming back. I didn't really read any of this because I didn't want to like know any of it. Wilson seemed to be the one who was going to do all this, but uh, he's currently cleaning jelly off of his entire okay, body. I'm back. Oh. We're, we're... Smuckers. All right. Um, really? Smuckers? So the da- yeah, dude. It... Good stuff. All right. We're not, <coughs> we're not tell, going there. So anyway, I... all right. the dawning's coming back and we're going to be doing some baking of the goods this year so it says eva has rever- returned to the tower for those of you who don't know eva levante was a npc in the tower from d1 she was a shader lady always mm-hmm. hooked it up like with, a lunch uh... lady 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. You'd stand in line and put shaders on your train and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, she's returned to the tower and brought her baking supplies with her. So all players of Destiny 2 are invited to join the celebration. She will provide the oven and some ingredients to get you started. So basically, it sounds like we're going to be trying different combinations of things uh, to make different cookies. And then we're going to be seeing different NPCs throughout the galaxy and exchanging those cookies for things like enhancement cores, mods, legendary gear, and no big deal, just an avalanche heavy machine gun with random rolls. And they show a picture of it, and it looks pretty dope. Ooh, not going to lie. Um, let's see here. They show off uh, the new Sparrow, which looks like a Harley Davidson cross with Santa's sleigh with like a dawning blue and gold I kind of really want that, actually. It looks really dope. So it gets some special perks as well. It gets the super fast summon which everyone wants on a Sparrow anyway. Uh, you're going to get the Glimmer Boost. While boosting, the Sparrow spawns a Glimmer Present every few seconds until the boost runs out. <laughs> glimmer Presents burst open after a moment so that players can acquire the Glimmer. Only All these bonuses will only be uh, active during the dawning. Not instant summon. Uh, except summoning. Yeah, instant that, summon says. That's for forever. Uh, glimmer the... trick. When a player lands a trick with the sparrow, three to five glimmer presents are spawned, only active during the dawning. Yep. You can say a big deal about glimmer, but I actually like glimmer. I go see spider on the reg, yeah. and either way, it's fun. Like it's something silly. Like just enjoy it. It doesn't. Yeah, need and we to... get to keep it. Yeah, it Remember doesn't. Remember the broom that we didn't yeah. get to keep the one time? This is. It doesn't need. This? It doesn't need to. You know, change the game. It doesn't need to be lore heavy. Like it's just fun. Like that's silly, and it's fun, and it's the holidays. Yeah. Like chill. Throw snowballs at each other. Like I wish they don't say anything about snowballs, but oh yeah, I forgot about snowballs. I really hope that was back because that was kind of fun. I um, doubt it. They would have mentioned it. I feel like. Dude, I do too, man. But that was really cool. I enjoyed cool. that. Um, so we're getting double drops as always um a new event means that new wares from eververse and during the dawning we're continuing the tradition of double engram drops so all players who are at max level depending on what content you own will receive both a bright engram and a dawning engram upon every level up there will also be a knockout list which was not present during last year's dawning that wasn't introduced until crimson days yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. There, there's a knockout list where it will prevent you from receiving duplicate items until you have earned all of the items. Yeah. So if you play and put in the time, which is... um, Sorry. Dawning begins Tuesday, December 11th and ends Tuesday, January 1st. Plenty of time to get in there and level up and earn all these items and not <laughs> spend a dime. Um, I, I, so you're going to get cool. Oh, go ahead. Oh. No, no, I'm just saying, no, dude, there's, there's a really cool ship that really looks like, uh, almost kind of like the new monarchy ship from D one kind of sorta like it, it's kind of in that same realm. So if you like more of the like D one style ships, um, mm. this one looks yeah, pretty looks dope. Like there's a new ghost good. that, um, is basically a snowman. Uh, it's got, That's you know, cool. one eye, a mouth and some sticks for Please. ears and um looks like multiplayer emotes are finally gonna sync up no more counting down and, yeah it'll um, do it on its own yeah that half second playstation delay you know uh, you gotta account for that um and i feel like it, it would only look synced up on one person or the other screen yeah totally yeah. some yeah exactly um we're getting some new exotic emotes and this was kind of different they actually came out ahead of time to let players know that there will be one exotic emote that will be exclusive to a bundle that is only available for direct purchase with silver. So if you log right. in, right. you right. see that, you can't act surprised if you heard that here, all right? There will be an emote that you have to pay. Dust? Uh, it says purchase with silver. Okay. Uh, there's also one more important thing. It says, uh, do you have stockpiles of bright dust piling up? Tess will also offer ingredient packs in exchange for Bright Dust. If you don't have a lot of Bright Dust and are worried about other players getting to bake all their goods without having to play, don't worry, that won't be the case. Eva Holiday 
Eva's holiday oven requires essence of dawning, which can only be acquired by playing activities in the game. Cool. So basically, if you want a few extra ingredients and you're like me and Hove and you're sitting on 22, 25 ish thousand I got a lot. bright dust. Yeah. Yeah, you can make it rain. You get a lot of, a lot of lap dances Take it with to that amount of. But uh, yeah, basically, they're not going to have a leg up on you. And Guardian, um, this is the one you have to pay for. Um, he's like mixing his eggs up in a bowl and then tosses them in the oven and then grabs that hot ass cookie sheet and uh holds it above his head so i mean it's pretty cool i probably won't be buying it but you know teach their own i want to clarify something just because of something that uh was said in chat when they say i think it was talking about the engrams all players that are at max level will get these engrams they're talking level level not power level right like Mm -hmm. as long as you're level 50 you could be like 350 it doesn't matter and it depends on what content you own obviously Well, yeah yeah but i'm saying like yeah you just mm-hmm. need to be at the max level, not power. Um, right. I think that's an important distinction because uh, Matt yeah. Grundy in chat said, I definitely won't get the max level rip. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'd assume you're already at max level. You don't have to get to 600, Yeah, I'm assuming you're already level 50. Yeah, they're talking the actual level, which doesn't usually come into effect uh, too much after base game or large yearly expansions right that's really the only time we have a you'll be close to 50 if you've played the forsaken campaign yeah you'll be really close to it um at least that's how i'm reading it because that's how it's always been uh they would never know it's not gonna be light level yeah actually it 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 would it would piss a lot of people off because you imagine (laughs) in the middle of oh hey guys we uh we know it's really fucking hard for you to get to max level, <laughs> so uh, you can only get this shit if you're max level. Ha <laughs> ha, see ya bitches, see you next yeah, year. Yeah, right. Yeah, we out. Merry Christmas. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to clarify that, because that would be a big, I mean, that's a big yeah. difference there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it for the dawning. It's going to be a bunch of cool shit to earn. Um, Fun stuff to do, cookies to bake. If you're around me, I'm going to eat all the cookies. Yeah, because so... you'll be high AF. Um, mm. <laughs> so what do you think about community questions? I'm down. All right. Yeah, down. We got some Twitter, good ones. Twitter boss, Twitter Let's master. See, Twitter bat, bat, bat uh, never mind. Um, master of Twitter. Te- First of his name. Tech Talk. Overton. <laughs> Tech Talk uh, has a question for moi. Do you ever feel like Peter Pan's shadow when people confuse you with KJ Hobie? <laughs> um, it sucks a little bit sometimes. <laughs> But it was really funny the other day when I pissed this dude off using that broken vest for Night Stalker, and he fucking tweeted Hovey and was like, you're a dick. Like, why would you do that? You should do that more often. That's amazing. I mean, it all came out like he wasn't mad. They won. Like, But it was funny because Hovey right. was like, what was the gamer tag? I don't even have that. And then like five minutes later with no other answers, he was like, was it Hove 76? And like tagged me. He was like, you're a dick. <laughs> um, Chazland says, no question, but a story. Saturday, Hmm. late, tired, about to sign off from a PvE session, decide to do Crucible Daily, join Match in Progress, at iFatebringer, pub stomping with Luna, it's a bloodbath, 43 kills. (laughs) I I had a 43 game too, four kills, (laughs) but three were (laughs) Fatebringer. Fusion and knives at least, embarrassing. Well, Chesland... (laughs) <laughs> that's pretty much how I feel when I play him too. He's kind of gross. You're braver than me because I refuse to play him. I just want to say that I played him one time in an actual like tournament setting and we shit on his team. Yikes. Just <laughs> <fired>. <laughs> hey, uh, he, he said he, he uh, three out of his four kills were fate bringer though, right? Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> GG. Yeah, exactly. I, You're in there. I pretty much ran from him that game. That's three more times than I've killed him. Yeah, no. Nah, yeah, <laughs> probably. <clears throat> no, definitely. Uh, another question from Tech Talk. What is your go-to shader for armor? How about for guns? Uh, quickly, I really like the original like red and gold new monarchy ones for guns. I think that looks super sick too. on a lot of guns. Uh, armor, like I don't know, but did you guys see uh, Seabay posted a tweet? He got something... It was like an all black looking shade. Yeah, all it black one. It was Lowry. awesome looking. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I really like the. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. This is a mouthful. 
Is Melkin's, it? Uh, Melkin's a dick. A bramble. Melika's oh, a dick. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I thought Mel- when you said it was a mouthful, <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about one of those big knights. Oh, okay. okay. Going with that. Right. It's all right. It's like a little chihuahua compared to that thing. Those Ooh, things are. Chihuahua. Yeah, man. Scared. I've been using one of the new ones from the Black Armory. It's it's like blue and gold. I threw it on the Reverie set, and I really liked it. I can't. I just can't think of the name offhand, but I re- I actually put it on all of my stuff that I would use to raid the other day. So whatever. That Clouds one is. at Sea is a Clouds one at Sea I like. could be that one. Oh, wait, really no, that's good. the one you're talking about, Wilson. That's the one I'm talking about. Okay. That's that's another one that I like as well. It's like a bluish gold. Mm. Mm. This one's like a royal. The bl- the gold is like definitely gold. It has like a little bit of black to it too. So I don't think I've seen that one yet. I'm kind of. I only had like, like eight of it. And I used all of it. So just compared to <laughs> like a uh, midnight talent. Yeah. Uh, just compare what? <laughs> Does it compare to like midnight talents, like the OG black and gold from? from vanilla uh, well no like the black is more of like an accent i mean it's truly more of like gotcha. an, uh, a royal and the gold <laughs> with like black but like i think on the pants for the very hunter scent like the sides of it would be black like whatever runs down the side mm. of the the pants are black but like the top part's gold and then mostly the legs are royal yeah looks pretty good though i just want to say i really like the questions this week i was just reading through them well, um, let's hear them i think we got questions from people <laughs> that we normally don't so very yeah, awesome yeah but really cool like interesting questions <laughs> yeah. uh oh, matt well, grundy yeah. Do you feel there's enough weapon diversity in D2 at the moment? I.e. Crucible only got two new weapons added to Loot Pool, both returning guns, I believe. We did kind of, I, you know, I kind of pointed this out a little bit before. It's another one of those things that I, I feel personally, I know that we're used to getting more with a content drop, but we need to re- like reevaluate the way things work. And I would like to completely hold off my answer until we see how many different things come with each of these three forges and the lab and the raid. Because, I mean, that's a potential, like... 20 new guns right there right pretty comfortable yeah. a- answering that now and i think that there's more diversity in the crucible yeah you lose a lot of you stuff could be crucible. really successful like like a lot of people are really scared of this uh mountaintop it's not gonna turn a trash can player into the next god streamer like it has there there is a skill curve if not more of a skill curve with a grenade launcher like there is much more discipline that goes in trying to become better with that weapon just like there's a certain amount of discipline that goes in with sniping or shotgunning or fusion rifling or primary you know like and there's going to be certain maps that play better to certain weapons you just gotta i don't think i think the days of being the one weapon to rule them all for every map i think that's over there's so much map diversity now all right and- frodo fair enough that was pretty cheesy uh, except <laughs> luna luna's dope that thing ain't leaving my side i I do like Luna. Yeah. Uh, Logan Beerman or Triton, did you kind of? I'm sorry. No, that I mean, I I would agree. I think you I seemed like you point. just kind of agreed with because yeah. we. Okay. Sorry. No, you're good. I <laughs> I think I chimed in first with my. I think there is. Uh, Logan Beerman, <laughs> uh, milk before or after cereal, and what's your take on using a cup for cereal and constantly adding fresh cereal to the milk of to the hell cup of milk? yeah that that's a By page the way, right out of my book. By the way, great show. Glad I found your podcast. Thanks to the Ninji episode. Uh, well, thank you, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, Ninji was awesome. And he stopped back and chat. We really appreciate him. He's a good dude. Yeah, that was a um, fun episode. But as far as just eating it regularly, it's definitely cereal before milk, right? Obviously. So you're saying you put mm-hmm. cereal in the bowl, then pour the milk? Yeah. Yes. 100%. Because I'm a human. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Not uh, a fascist. I kind of might want to try... <laughs> I don't know. This just seems like a lot of work because here's my thing with the, the, the whole t- the cup for cereal and adding more. I really kind of enjoy just like pouring as big of a cereal bowl as I can, like that I'm going to eat. And then just like playing around on my phone or reading the paper or something while I eat. I don't, I don't want to have to do like, it sounds great. Like the, the idea, but like the way I go about eating cereal, I just kind of chill. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel you. Like sometimes though, like me being like, you know, the, the like lazy stoner sometimes like i go to a cereal and not all the cereal bowls are clean just kind of on there and i look over and i see big giant coffee (coughs) mug so i'll just put the cereal in the coffee mug and pour the milk in there and just eat it out of that because i don't really feel like doing the dishes at 10 30 at night so i'm a cereal at night kind of guy i don't have cereal in the morning uh, maybe rarely in the afternoon but i'm like between like 8 and 11 cereal guy like uh 
you read the paper? How old are <laughs> <Fuck> you? Fuck <laughs> you. That's what I was laughing at. Nice, Matt. Um, but yeah, it, I get the whole cereal in the cup thing, but that's mostly out of laziness. For yeah, me. I was going to say that wasn't like a... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Triton? I'm really curious on um, your thoughts. Yeah, definitely uh, <laughs> cereal before milk. There was a second part. Uh, I mean, I guess I, I could Would try that. I don't know. I don't really eat a lot of cereal, so I think that's that's my big thing. Like, if I'm going to eat mm. breakfast, it's, like, got to be, like, eggs, bacon, toast, all that stuff. I'm not really a Which big is also guy. better at night, in my opinion, than actual breakfast. Like breakfast I mean, I love dinner. having breakfast for dinner as well. I've definitely done that with, like, pancakes. Phenomenal. Bacon and See, stuff like that. I mean, it is a good time. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm the kind of person who goes to, like, a 24-hour, like, diner, like, in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, like I get like a, because like, you're sauce. Well, no, I, I mean, yeah, but I, I meant like if I do go somewhere, like we used to go like in high school. Sometimes we'd go to Eaton Park before breakfast, Ooh. and I would get like a cheeseburger. You know, and the fries when they were good. The fries when they were good. Yeah. Um. Here's maybe my fav, one of my favorite questions I think we've ever gotten because this shows like, it's funny. There's some thought. And he, like, knows us. Asriel Speaks asks, Who is the most powerful? Lego with a fusion <laughs> rifle. Mana with a sniper in D1. Right there, I was like, oh, good question. Ooh. And then I then I kept reading. Hove with a cheesesteak. <laughs> Wilson with a new vape flavor. Oh, or Triton yeah. with a stat book. By the way, my money would be on Triton. Yes. I actually, I'm actually glad you said that because right when I heard Triton with a stat book, yeah. I'm just saying I hate to toot my own horn, but I'll fuck shit up with a cheesesteak. That's not scary. That's inviting. Like, you got a cheesesteak? No, because if you come anywhere near me when I have a (laughs) cheesesteak, I will fucking bite your arm off. (laughs) Yeah, but (laughs) Triton will make me feel like a fucking idiot with all of his stats and numbers that I can barely comprehend. Like, I know, know like, five numbers, like, 42069. Like, that's it. I oh I think I love <laughs> I love this question because uh, I had Wendler we had Wendler on recently and he was talking about matchmaking going over like his stats that he had kept true for matchmaking so I started doing that a little bit afterwards to trend out like you know matchmaking is it different I think pre forsaken post forsaken I think that's basically the sample I could draw on but I noticed that after a while that I had basically taken so much of a sample in as opposed to taking like a normalized distribution approach that I think I just proved that over a period of time like. Basically, like if you flip a coin five times, you might you could get five heads. But if you flip it over a hundred times, you probably are going to revert more to the mean, which is like fifty percent. So instead of that, and in considering like a central limit theorem, and also with like a Gaussian, like I thought, like well, maybe this is a better way to have like look at my like experimental results distribution, and then that would allow me to approximate like you know confidence intervals and calculate those easier so then i looked at that and i think i got to a point where i realized that early in the month when people are always like is something different with matchmaking i started noticing that my games were significantly worse at the beginning of the month so and i started out to think like is matchmaking different and i i think that like there's maybe a baseline it takes from you every single update of the first month and then that way it kind of slots you into a certain section as opposed to like a continual evolution over the month of my matchmaking has changed. I think it might just change earlier on. So I think I moved from having a large sample to a much more normalized one. And then, you know, it was hard to come up with like maybe what the standard deviation is or even what the population See, mean would terrifying. be. So, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Like, I really was, I really, <laughs> if I ever, that'd be see what his sample was. I forgot to ask how many games he had taken over the course of that time. But um, I just basically taken too many. So terrifying. I took a random sample of, I think like, Triton with a stat book. Boom. Triton is a stat book. Um, I also do this for my my kids hitting stats for like seven year olds, and we won a ton of tournaments. I've never been felt dumber in my life. I will say (laughs) that Matt Grundy redeemed himself in chat because he said Eaton Park breakfast at 2 a.m., nothing better. Eaton Park in general at 2 a.m. is like one of my favorite things. Come down and hang out with me and Hove at Eaton Park. Do you want to hear a funny story about an Eaton Park? So the one at the waterfront. They, which is a shopping center uh, about a mile from my house. Uh, the place used to be open 24 hours, and they used to have a microphone at the hostess stand to, like, call people, you know, when you were waiting. So I used to go there kind of drunk after going out. And a couple times I would go straight from work to the bar to Eaton Park. So I would go in in, like, dress pants and a dress shirt. 
So the one time I was real drunk and I started telling everyone there that I was the manager <laughs> and they didn't know any better. <laughs> so <laughs> I not only was using the microphone and like telling Jesus his table for 12 was ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeez. But I oh also God. started like seating people. Um, I would just grab a couple menus and like tell them like that their <laughs> table was ready. So the one time, uh, it was two girls and a guy, and I picked up two menus and I walked over and I said, "Oh, you know, your table's ready. You can follow me." And they all got up and I said, "Oh no, sir, I'm sorry. We only have room for these two ladies. Uh, we'll be back to get you in a little bit." And he sat there, and I sat these two girls, and then I just sat down with them. And then I felt bad after a couple. We laughed. I was like, I don't work here. I was shit-faced. And I walked back up, and he was good-natured about it. I was like, hey, man, I don't even work here. I'm just fucking with you. Like, come on, let's go sit down. (laughs) So I then also grabbed a crayon and a napkin, and I took their drink orders. And then when the waitress actually came by, I cut her off, and I slapped the napkin down on her tray and said, I already took care of it. And I just walked away. Uh, the next time I went there, oddly enough, the microphone was gone. And there was actually... <laughs> they changed their fries. There was actually a hole in the wall <laughs> where it had used to be, like, bolted in. Like, someone just fucking ripped it out. Like, fuck this kid. So, yeah, I ruined everybody down there. Yeah, um, because they also started closing that Eaton Park earlier than... It was, like, 10 hours. years they, they later. Kicked, they kicked us out, ho. That was, like, 10 years later. They remember you. They kicked us out of that very same Eaton Park. It is, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, we did get kicked out. This should be a quick one because we did kind of cover this. Uh, Sasori Kish, Kishi, Kishi, I can't speak. Uh, uh, in the TWAB, they say they want to bring updates more often and reference an update planned in two months. Unless you covered this earlier in the show, what are your thoughts? We did a little bit. Um, here's my thing, and I hate it always being, let's wait to see, let's wait to see. But over the last year... I think it is very important important to look at it as a whole because from Warmind to Forsaken and probably a little bit longer, we had asked them to pretty much completely revamp the game, right? I mean, they had said how long, like even just a time to kill adjustment wasn't as easy as just let's bump up the damage because then it affected everything in PvE, everything in PvP. Um, They completely changed the weapon system. So I, I feel like you gotta give them a pass there, right? Because they were completely rehauling everything. Like they weren't overhauling everything. They weren't going to make yeah. adjustments in between. Um, now, yeah, I mean, not much between Forsaken and now, but you just made that big change. You need to let things settle, settle out. And I don't think the way things have worked since Forsaken with new stuff coming out all the time, I can't imagine that they've just been like, that was all done and they've just been chilling. I feel like all of this has continued to get worked on. And now, as we said, they're going on holiday break. We already knew that was going to happen. Then you have to come back, get everything tested and ready. So I hate to keep saying, well, it's because of this, it's because of that. But I don't know. I don't think it's as easy as just saying, well, we're going to change a bunch of shit because it's been three weeks. So I don't know. But that's my thought. I think you pretty much nailed it, to be honest. I hate to be that guy that's like, yeah, what he said, but I mean, sorry. No, that's fine. You nailed it. <laughs> Job, homie. Triton, you got anything? Not. I don't want any stats. No, then no. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Scotty Manning asks: Is Aquaman the movie more exciting than the Forge? Um, I don't know. I think the potential of the Forge is more exciting for sure. I think there this could be fun. Um, but I think Aquaman looks pretty good, right? I always thought Aquaman was pretty lame, but... I mean, I think I agree with how the potential for the Forge is probably greater than the potential for Aquaman. I don't like how they did Maris Hair. I'm with Wilson, too. It's like, well, I mean, it's how good is Aquaman going to be? I mean, it's like a bit of me. I think, like, there's, like, 10 bucks potentially we talked about earlier. 10 bucks potentially wasted Ooh, with that's Aquaman, a good call. Whereas I already feel that my 10 bucks or 12 50 whatever is well that's spent. That's a good call. The, wow. To be fair, though... Before 2008, did anybody really give a shit about Iron Man? Iron Man was always cool. Like I don't. I like, like I, I liked him, but he was definitely B list at best. I don't feel like no. people jumped on the hype train with Iron Man. I think people who always liked Iron Man did. Some people were introduced 
to Iron Man just because they love Robert Downey Jr. Just like mm-hmm. you're going to see Detective Pikachu just because it has Ryan Reynolds. In. You know what I mean? He was like, a reboot in the Ultimates. I mean, he was still one of the faces when the Ultimates came out from, like, I think, Bendis' mm-hmm. run in 2000. And he was the key figurehead on Civil War. But you're talking, you're still talking he's, just comics. Like, a lot of these other people, he's like, been in a lot of video Spider-Man, games. Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. Through video games. There's they, been tons of fighting games since, like, back in the 90s. Those, like, he's those always other been a... characters transcend comics before the MCU got big. I don't feel like Iron Man did. Right. If you weren't a comics fan and looking for Marvel stuff, you didn't know who he was. Spider-Man... You, everyone knows who Spider Man. Well, yeah, everyone. You knows were a Marvel Spider-Man. versus Capcom fighting. You, you, were, you knew he was. You knew exactly who the fuck Iron Man was. Oh, fuck you. Um. <laughs> 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 um. The festive hobo. Number of raid mm-hmm. encounters prediction. Five. Ooh. I'm going. Four. I'm sorry. Four. Four. I'm saying no, four, you yeah. said five. I said four. Try and you're fine. Out of luck. You fucking prices right me, both of you. It's supposed to be bigger than Crota, which was three. But why don't you just go ahead and say six? Try and he'll say four, and this will be like prices right, and I'll be well, pissed was... at both of you. Here's the thing: it's gonna it's gonna come down to it's gonna come down to what you consider an encounter because technically, yeah. you could call Crota the abyss, the yeah. bridge, the thrall hall thing. Uh, yeah, I thrall guess way. thrall way. Uh the death things yeah the first before crota death comes singers. out yeah and then singers. crota so you could call crota five you could I, I would say wherever you get looped is the end of an encounter mm. okay that's fair that's me personally that does that's not the definitive that's how i gauge encounters did you get did you get loot at the end you did get loot, loot at the end of the bridge okay no that's yeah, fair the bridge. that's no. fair that's you fair. did at the end of the throwaway but that was just the chest yeah, that was just oh, that's true, but you had to door. make it through. Just like the abyss, yeah. you had to make it to. It, see, it's yeah. it's iffy. That's where it becomes mm. iffy. Shades of gray. But what was in the 50, chest? Though? You couldn't get anything out of the chest except for like the radiant material, though, right? It wasn't. Yeah, that like wasn't a, an exotic. A drop, chest. drop. Yeah. But granted, the only two exotic chests on there were Death Singers and Crota, right? And you got to consider the abyss and the bridge exotic, or I mean, encounters. And they weren't. True, but you got more than radiant material out yeah. of them. Yeah. I don't know. Tough, 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 tough. That is a tough one. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to call it... I'm going to go four and a half over under. <laughs> well, because like I said, I, I feel like there's going to be something that we... How do you get half a loot drop? If you base it off that way, never mind. That was a stupid question. Continue. I deserve that look you're giving me. I just, no, I just <laughs> think... Because I think there's going to be something in there that we're like, eh, is that an encounter? Or is that not an encounter? You yeah. know? True. Okay. 4.5. Mm-hmm. Over under. Lock it in. Loser does dishes for a month. (laughs) Wilson, you just want to be able to have have cereal whenever you want. Um, Oh, I didn't even see this. A non... (laughs) Twitter blocked this one from me. Oh, no. A non-pig said, question for Lego, even though he's not here. You disgust me. You're sucking lore (laughs) holes? (laughs) The answer is yes. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Lego said something about watching YouTube videos and getting sucked down the lore hole, and I said, "Lego, are you sucking lore holes again?" Oh and God. he didn't say no. <laughs> um, no was not said. I think that was it. I really like those questions this week. Um, that was good ones. We have some cool listeners. Someone asked about joining Rezo. We are not. Oh, I did recruiting. miss that one. I meant yeah. to. Well, I mean, I I think that yeah, went I mean, it's to a joke one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What what was it? Uh, he soloed the forge, was it? And tier four blindwell. Yeah, yeah. Do I get in a rezo now? Um, actually, just reach out to KJ Hovey. And <laughs> yes. Ask him. Message him one v one, and he will get right back to you. I promise. You were probably Ooh. behind in behind line of Paul Tassi, who did mm. reach out about maybe being. In. Yeah. <laughs> so probably uh, behind him. Two two things. Uh, one earlier, I did. Wilson, when did you try? I just bought it like three days ago. Um, day before yesterday. Mm. Pretty much as soon as we saw the emblem. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we were trying to think of something to get. Yeah. So the two things quickly. Um, going back to the beginning of the show when we talked about that article, uh, kind of talking about Destiny as, as a subscription. I did tweet that out from the Rezocast account. So if you're listening to it live, it's our last tweet. If you're listening to it a few days you know, whenever and haven't read it. It is in our Twitter feed. We don't tweet that much except when we're going live and and whatnot. So it'll be there. Um, Second, Matt Grundy asked in chat, did anyone get the lore book? Uh, I did. And I was partially really upset 
that I ordered it like the day before that emblem came out. That uh. is, but it turns out everyone must have had the same idea because apparently it is sold out now. Shit is hype. That was uh, the one that Mylan worked on, right? Mylan Games. Yeah. Yep. yep so you yep. know it's done right. Yeah, it's gonna be mm. really cool. Yeah. Um. I'll have to check it out. I almost guarantee you they'll be getting more stuff of it. They just kind of needed to gauge in. Yeah. Can I like bring it? Like I'll I'll come over and like. Read me a read bedtime you story. A bedtime story. Yeah, hundred percent. We're right. just on. We just need. I just need. You know, Sam's gonna just have to just leave us alone. Are you kidding me? She's already accepted you as the like the the boyfriend's boyfriend. <laughs> She's always like, "I'll be playing with Sam," and she'll go, "Wilson, your boyfriend says hi." <laughs> Yeah, I'll be like, I'll be walking in the kitchen, like getting some cereal or something. And she'll be like, your boyfriend says hi, and I'll be like, hi ho. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of, so I mean, you guys just brought up saying we had the episode where it was like Wilson, and Lulu, and I. I think one of the community questions was like, have you ever like rejected playing with someone or something like that, right, Wilson? Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, have you ever yeah. made when something? Was up? one time that you used yeah gaming to get out of work, or and one like time that. to avoid like a friend or something? Yeah. Well, I want to just say in terms of she probably gave me it was like a couple weeks ago, but like the nicest I can't play right now response like of all time. I forget what it was, <laughs> but it was like just the was, kindest thing ever. It was a lie. Was, like, nothing or no one else. It was like sorry Triton, i have to do this and i have to do this and i really want to but i can't i was just like oh that was really nice who are we talking about so, sam oh okay she's not that she's nice a sweetheart yeah, she, i mean she, she she's a sweetheart <laughs> she, she can, that will fuck yeah. you up yeah um most important thing i mean i this has been mentioned in the past but i would just like to bring this up again um we always you know we were talking about cheesesteaks earlier I have this idea. Would do, do one of you guys want to start a restaurant? I mean, yeah, man. Yeah, Listen, sure. <laughs> we're gonna call it. <laughs> we're gonna call yeah, it. Yeah, man. We're gonna call it monopoly money sitting around. So <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead. You get a loan, man. You call it. We're gonna call it steaks and cakes. Catchy already, right? Steaks and cakes. It's yeah, I should inform you though that I don't know how to cook. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not like we're gonna actually like. It's fine. I could do dishes. Yeah, you could just smoke a bunch of weed. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm in. <laughs> and we're gonna focus on cheesesteaks and cheesecakes. I'm down. Come on. <laughs> That's a good idea. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a good idea. Call it steaks and cakes. You have different kind I'm of cheesesteaks and cheesecakes, which is also funny because how many times, especially when I first started making cheesesteaks, my currency and stream did people think it was cheesecakes you know so yes. like yes they still yeah. do yeah so I've never seen okay yeah i think that's a great idea that's a good idea steaks and cakes come on tell me that's not even like that's that's catchy AF. that is catchy you guys in? i mean is lego gonna be the face of the commercials too? <laughs> yes we hit like all women demographics of yes you triton you can cook the books i'll cook the food okay <laughs> And Wilson will just like hang out in the alley sell, t- selling I will weed. Hype that shit. That's what I'll do. <laughs> hang out in the alley. I'll be the hype guy. <laughs> um. I'll anyway, stand out in the parking lot with the sign, the arrow. I really like. I would have no idea how to even get started, and it'll never happen. But like, I really think that could be a good idea, and I really want to do it, but I won't, because I'm like really lazy. You gotta step out of your comfort zone to. No, it's not even comfort. It's like. I'm tired and lazy. <laughs> I don't want to do relate, it. man. I feel you. Um, so, yeah. Finally, on a real note, uh, just want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Blue Mics and Headphones. Uh, we do have, we'll have another giveaway coming up. We had a little delay just with the holidays and everything. So, if you won our last one, uh, your stuff, you should be getting a, a uh, uh, tracking number very, very soon. Um but yeah that's where we get all this cool stuff uh blue makes some great stuff the mics the headphones all that good stuff if you want some of it besides uh entering our giveaways which you can follow our twitter for uh if you use code rezocast at bluemike.com uh you get 20 percent off your purchase i think it's up to a thousand dollars but like that's a lot of money uh so yeah i mean if you need headphones for music for podcasting Whatever it may be, they make a wide range of really, really awesome stuff. And 20% off ain't nothing to sneeze at, you heard? 
I heard. I heard. Achoo. <laughs> Achoo, so, uh, yeah, Rezocast, R-E-Z-O-C-A-S-T. Use that code at checkout. And um, you guys got anything else? You told them to follow our Twitter. What is the Twitter? I didn't get yeah. to that yet. I was asking if you guys had anything else before oh. we signed off. God! I just, that's Damn what it! I did have. I just, oh. you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no. I well, think that I case, um, thanks for hanging out, everybody. If you would like to hear f- more from us during the week, you can follow us on Twitter at Rezocast. Uh, you can also follow Team Resolute at Team Resolute, both on Twitter. Um, I am Hove. You can find me on Twitter at Hove76 and right here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Hove76. You can also find me at Eaton Park flipping the fuck out if their fries aren't good. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if I'm not here next week, I'm probably in jail. Triton. <laughs> okay. Well, I also am not happy about the Eden Park fries, but you can find me mainly on Twitter under Triton, please. Or you can probably catch me. I have done like two streams this year, so I might do a third. We'll see. Might get a third <laughs> stream out of me. So, uh, also on Twitch, all under Triton, please. One word. The uh, please being PLZ. Also, speaking of stats, if you're interested in seeing oh, like what fuck. I think the intelligence level is of hoes, all the strippers he's dated, we are doing a normalized distribution of that now. So that curve goes that low. You can, well, it's always a bell curve, so I mean, like we know here that this <laughs> is basically where the normalized distribution is. So, like, I think roughly like you know we know like one standard. Wilson, where can we find you? <laughs> You can find me staring at Triton's graph, confused as fuck. Um, but no, seriously, hit me up on Twitter at Ryu Wilson. That's R Y U Wilson. Hit me up. Send me your PlayStation PSN. Send me a friend request. Wilson three hundred nine. Tell me you're a fan of the podcast. I'd love to play with some viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, get more involved with uh, our viewership. So um, hit me up. Any concerns, questions, comments you have about Destiny or Steaks and Cakes? Yeah. Hit me up <laughs> at Ryu Wilson. <laughs> um, and and very very lastly, uh, if anyone you know if you guys listen to this pretty pretty regularly, you know I like to make Lego as uncomfortable as possible. Um, so if you really want to kind of get him a little riled up, feel free to. Uh, I, I this isn't even a push for reviews. Review would work because I know he'll check it, but tweet us whatever and um, tell him that you want to a give him your thoughts on steaks and cakes. And B, um, tell him you'd like to hear a secondary podcast, uh, you know, where, like, we, we have some names going in chat, Hove Heaven, Seven Minutes in Hove, Seven Minutes in Hove Heaven, where we just talk nothing Destiny, and we just go off on a rant, which I think is, I think that's when we're our best, that. Wilson. What I would love think? that. See? I'm down. So, uh, yeah, get Lego, make him uncomfortable. Tell him you want to see that, hear that, whatever. Um... Yeah, so that's about it. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. GG's. Bye.